Members, the Right Honourable, the Lord Mayor. City of Adelaide Council meeting on Tuesday the 30th of July 2019. The Lord Mayor is in the chair. This council meeting will be streamed live and recorded for publishing to the internet. Please note that an audio and visual recording is being taken of this meeting. This means that your presence at and any contribution you make to the meeting may be collected, used, disclosed or published publicly by the council, including transferring outside of Australia. The red light to my right indicates that the meeting is being filmed and streamed. Council acknowledges that we're meeting on the traditional country of the Ghana people of the Adelaide Plains and pays respects to elders past and present. We recognise and respect their cultural heritage, beliefs and relationship with the land and acknowledge that they're of continual importance to the Ghana people living today. We also extend that respect to other Aboriginal language groups and other First Nations who may be present with us today. Council acknowledges the vision of Colonel William Light in determining the site for Adelaide and the design of the city with its six squares and surrounding belt of continuous parklands, which is recognised on the National Heritage List as one of the greatest examples of Australia's planning heritage. Let us pray. Almighty God, we ask your blessing upon the works of the City of Adelaide. Direct and prosper its deliberations to the advancement of your glory and the true welfare of the people of this city. Amen. Will all present stand in silence in memory of those who gave their lives in defence of their country, at sea, on land and in the air. Thank you, members. We have one apology tonight from Councillor Kouros, who is on leave. Um, I'll look for confirmation of the minutes from the 16th of July. Um, if I could have someone pass the minutes. Thank you, Councillor Pannell. And a seconder. Thank you, Councillor Sims. Is there any uh, feedback, discussion, debate? If not, I'll go back to Councillor Pannell, sum up. Members, if you can vote, those in favour. Those against, those are carried. Um, there are no deputations tonight, nor are there any petitions, which takes us to item nine on the agenda, uh, which is the recommendations of committee from the 23rd of July. Uh, we'll go to the first recommendation, which is regulated tree removal in uh, Tatanya Wama, which is part 26, and I'll look for a mover. Thank you, Councillor Gnoll, and a seconder. Thank you, Deputy Lord Mayor. Councillor Gnoll, did you wish to speak to it? No, Deputy Lord Mayor? Uh, Members, any discussion? Debate? If not, I'll go back to Councillor Gnoll to sum up. Thank you. Uh, Members, if I can call for the vote, those in favour, those against, that is carried. Sorry. Uh, that takes us to recommendation two, which is Rymel Park, uh, Merla Wirapoka, Park 24, which is the draft master plan. Uh, members, I'll look for a mover. Thank you, Councillor Hyde, and a seconder, Councillor Sims. Councillor Hyde, did you wish to speak to that? I'll reserve my right. Councillor Sims? Members? If not, 
I'll go back to Councillor Hyde to sum up. Uh, the only thing I'll say in summing up, um, Lord Mayor, and I'd just impress upon other councillors that I've already been doing a bit of canvassing about the question of do we have uh, a, um, an ornamental lake that is just lake in Rymel Park, or do we have um, uh, sort of a more of a water catchment area that has uh, uh, weeds in it, I call them. But um, the overall <laughs> consensus th thus far, and we'll look to see what comes out of the consultation, is that we would like to keep the ornamental lake um, because it's probably the only one in the entirety of the parklands. Um, so I'll just leave you with that feedback in anticipation of the uh, responses. Thank you, Councillor. Members, those in favour? Those against? Thank you, that is carried. Uh, the third recommendation of the committee is the Hindley Street Improvement Project. I'll look for a mover, Deputy Lord Mayor, second to Councillor Ho. Deputy Lord Mayor, did you wish to speak to this? Right. Councillor Ho. Members? If not, back to the Deputy Lord Mayor to sum up. Thank you. Members, those in favour? Those against? Councillor Moran, are you voting? Thank you. Uh, that is carried. That takes us to recommendation number four. Um, now, members, I need someone to move either one and two or the alternate two. Um, if I would look to the floor. Thank you, Councillor Martin. Uh, Which? Is this a paid position, Lord Mayor? Uh, no, I don't believe oh, it is. Oh, I think it's fine for Councillor Tom. So, sorry, Councillor, are you meet, are you <laughs> moving one and two or the alternate two? No, I'm moving one and two. Thank you. Look for a seconder. Can't deputy Lord Mayor. Councillor Martin, did you wish to speak to it? No, Mayor, just to commend Councillor Donovan as a perfect choice. I will actually ask Councillor Donovan, first of all, if you're willing to accept that. Thank you, Councillor. Um, Deputy Lord Mayor, did you wish to speak? Councillor Hyde, did you wish to speak? Oh, I just wanted to highlight if anyone else has a burning desire um, uh, to be the, uh, I suppose, proxy um, for Helen, I'd be happy to, to give it up. If I could be guided by, and I'd amend it accordingly. We'll take us. Okay. It has been seconded. Um, is there any other discussion? If not, I'll go back to Councillor Martin to sum up. Thank you. Um, members, those in favour? Those against? That is carried. Uh, that takes us to recommendation number five. So the first one is procedural. Uh, I need someone to uh, move that we approve the appointment and note the call. Thank you, Councillor Sims. Second to Deputy Lord Mayor. Councillor Sims, did you wish to speak to it? Thank you, Deputy Lord Mayor. Okay, members. So for the procedural, we'll go back to Councillor Sims to sum up. Thank you. Those in favour? Those against? Thank you, that's carried. I'll now look for a nomination of a council representative for the Local Government Finance Authority, ATM. Councillor Martin. Um, I, with her acceptance, I'd like to nominate uh, Councillor Donovan. She's happy to do that. Councillor Donovan, do you accept the nomination? Thank you. Members, are there any other nominations? If not, I'll ask for a seconder for that nomination. Thank you, Councillor Hyde. Um, members, any discussion? Debate? Nothing? Councillor Martin, would you like to sum up? Thank you. Those in favour? Those against? That is carried. Congratulations, Councillor Donovan. <laughs> <laughs> Lovely. Um, we will be calling for nominations again for 2020, so Councillor Donovan may wish to stay or she may actually wish someone else to take that position. Um, recommendation six is the 20-year infrastructure strategy discussion paper response. I will look for a mover, Deputy Lord Mayor, and a seconder, please. Thank you. Uh, sorry. I've got both your hands at the same time. Uh, sorry, I'll go to Councillor Ho. Thank you. Deputy Lord Mayor, did you wish to speak to it? Is that right? Councillor Hyde. No, members. 
Councillor Martin. Yeah, look, Lord Mayor, I just wish to record again that I will be voting against this. Um, the motion requires Council to endorse exploration of value capture. Value capture is a tax on landowners uh, and to quote a Sydney University publication, for the uninitiated value capture is where taxes harvest the unimproved land value capital gain derived from enhanced infrastructure amenity. And it's not lost on me, Lord Mayor, that late this night will be asked to endorse a proposal related to land tax, which is opposed by many of my colleagues, but apparently we don't oppose value capture. Thank you, Councillor Martin. Members, any other, anyone else wish to speak to it? Councillor Sims. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, look, I have some concerns as well um, in relation to the inclusion of privatisation um, and the uh, reference to the potential of privatisation of council uh, infrastructure in the future. We've seen in the state the implications of that. Um, particularly in New South Wales um, and you know the issue of uh, privatisation of public assets and public land is becoming a big issue in, in cities around the world um, and I don't want to see us go down this path. Uh, Councillor Martin raised this issue at the last uh, committee meeting um, and I think it's something that needs further consideration and I am concerned about it being included in a long-term strategy. Thank you Councillor Sims. Uh, Deputy Lord Mayor, you, oh sorry, members any other discussion? If not, go back to the DLM to sum up. Members, those in favour? Those against? That is carried. Thank you. Uh, members, that takes us to item 9.2 on the agenda tonight, which is the advice of the Adelaide Parklands Authority from the 25th of July and the recommendation uh, one, which is the BMX precinct. If I look for someone to move. Uh, thank you, Councillor Martin. Councillor Abraham said that was your second. So, Councillor Martin, did you wish to speak to this at all? Um, look, I need to say, Lord Mayor, that I know this will be coming to us, but I've read the paper that was presented to our Got it's a thorough report. It's one of the best reports I've seen. Um, but can the administration confirm that I haven't misread that this is not to be an item for council expenditure until 2021? Is, it, is that correct? Uh, through you, see you. Through you, Lord Mayor, that is correct. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Councillor Abraham Zedo, did you wish to speak to anyone? Members? If not, back to the move to summer. Thank you. Members, those in favour? Those against? I, I saw that. That was in favour? Yeah, thank you, Councillor. Um, that is carried. And that takes us to 9.3, which is the recommendation of the audit committee from the 19th of July. We have two recommendations. The first recommendation is a report of the audit committee from the 19th of July. Thank you, Councillor Martin, and a seconder. Thank you, Councillor Hyde. Uh, Councillor Martin, did you speak to it? Is everybody right? Councillor Hyde? No. Members? No, if not, back to the mover. Councillor Martin, summed up. Those in favour? Those against, that is carried. Uh, recommendation number two is the accounting standards position paper. I look for a mover, thank you, Councillor Martin. And a seconder. Thank you, Councillor Knoll. Councillor Martin, did you wish to speak to it? Councillor Knoll. Members? No, if not, back to the mover. Councillor Martin. Uh, thank you, members. Those in favour? Those against? That is carried. Members, that takes us to item 10 on the agenda, which is my report. Um, so a lot's been happening in the last month. Since my last update to this chamber, I hosted a Lord Mayoral luncheon in the Queen Adelaide Room to thank the generous benefactors of the Quarter Club for their significant and ongoing support of the South Australian Appeal Team uh, Committee. and. Uh, local athletes as they prefer, prepare for the Tokyo Olympic Games next year. Um, in partnership with Business SA, the Premier presented the 2019-2020 state budget at a forum at the Queen Adelaide Room. Um, in my welcoming address, I spoke about the major projects currently underway by the City of Adelaide and this council's achievement since our election and introduced our new for Designed for Life brand. Um, I attended meetings of Garrick, the city 
Capital City Committee, the Prince Climate Change Committee, the Council of Capital City Lord Mayors and the Asia Pacific <coughs> City Summit in Brisbane and hosted the second Hymie Street Roundtable. Um, I also participated in the Bloomberg Harvey City, uh, Bloomberg Harvard City Leadership Initiative in New York, which was a gathering of 40 merits from across the globe focusing on data analysis, collaboration and innovation. Um, I hosted the Lord Merrill reception for the Ghana Boomerangs and the Ice Factor program, the Global Leadership Conference delegation in Adelaide to learn about our expertise in circular economy, to welcome the researcher in residence, Professor James Pawalski, and to mark the 10 years of St Vincent de Paul Society CEO Sleep Out fundraiser. And I thank those council members who attended and also those who emceed for me at those receptions. I welcome a delegation of our sister city of Qingdao. During their visit, a memorandum of understanding was signed, which will see a sister city school relate a sister sorry a sister school relationship established between Qingdao Number no. Nine High School and Adelaide High School. Um, I attended the City Awards at Keith Murdoch House, co-hosted by the City of Adelaide and News Corp. This was the fifth year the awards had been held. On last year's number, there was a 31% increase in businesses nominated and a 15% increase in the number of votes from member of public. Business SA has also come on board as a sponsor providing advisory services and training to the awards recipients. Um, I attended the South Australian Architecture Awards to present the City of Adelaide Prize, which was awarded to Karen Rolton Oval at Nanunga Park 25 by Cox Architects. The City of Adelaide Prize People's Choice was awarded to the recent extension of St Mary's School on West Terrace by Grief uh, Gillett Anderson. Um, I also opened the proceedings for the announcement of the centrepiece of the 2020 60th Anniversary Adelaide Festival, which will be the Requiem by Mozart, directed by Romeo Castellucci, which would be amazing. And I attended the City of Adelaide's Lion Club Annual Dinner and Awards. The NAIDOC morning tea at the Adelaide Town Hall, and I thank Councillor Sims for uh, representing me at some of the NAIDOC functions. Um, the Sala opening night, and the big issues, big, the big lunch at the Central Market uh, on Sunday. Members, could I have someone accept my report? Thank you, Councillor Sims, seconded by Councillor Knowles. Members, those in favour? Those against? That's carried. Thank you. That takes us to item 11, 11.1, which is a report from council members. And I will look for a mover. Thank you, Council Abraham today. And a seconder, Council Canal. Council Abraham today, did you wish to speak to it? Uh, I do, Lord May, just very briefly. Um, uh, just wanted to highlight one thing, and that was the SA Architecture uh, Awards. Um, as you mentioned, Lord Mayor, the uh, um, uh, Karen Rolton Oval did take out uh, the award, and I highly recommend members for those of you who haven't seen uh, this building or who haven't experienced this piece of architecture up close and personal. I suggest you do so. Thank you, Councillor Knoll. Did you wish to speak? Members, are there any other things you wish to speak to Councillor Hyden and Councillor Donovan? Yes, thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, I just wish to highlight and, and potentially add to the list if if at all able, um, uh, that as the ex officio uh, member of the uh, Royal Adelaide Hospital Auxiliary Committee, I attended uh, their committee meeting on Tuesday, the 16th of July. Um, uh, and I just wanted to highlight uh, that this uh, very long standing uh, volunteer group that has a very long history um, in within the city of Adelaide um, do some magnificent work. And I'd just like to pay tribute to their volunteers. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. And we will add that to the report. Councillor Donovan. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Just to briefly um, update the Council on the National General Assembly of Local Government, which was held in Canberra from the 16th to the 19th of June. Um, and I was the appointed delegate and the theme was future focused. Um, as the appointed voting representative, I was able to submit the two motions that we put forward from the City of Adelaide, which were that the NGA calls on the Australian government to develop Australian standards for the provision of national standards for cycling infrastructure, including separated bikeways, 
and also that the ALGA lobbies the Australian government for changes to the Telecommunications Act 1997 and or the Telecommunications Low Impact Facilities Determination of 2018 to either remove public payphones from the definition of low impact facility or otherwise require planning approval for payphones. And both of those uh, motions were uh, seconded and carried without debate and uh, in regard particularly to the first one were enthusiastically supported by other members of the other. Um, the conference also heard from the Honourable Michael McCormack MP, member for Riverina, Deputy Prime Minister, who recognised the role of local government and reaffirmed federal commitments to infrastructure, roads, black spots, drought and communities. While some reflected on the outcome of the federal election, much of the conference focused on future challenges and opportunities, which was of course foreshadowed by the conference title. We also heard from futurist Steve Sammartino, who spoke about the AI revolution which is occurring and what it could mean for local government. Um, and many spoke to the role of local government and opportunity to be at the forefront of those changes by virtue of being the closest tier of government to the community. Key issues of interest we're hearing about what others are doing around issues such as homelessness and waste management, which have been uh, prevalent in our own chamber. And one of the key benefits personally was um, being able to speak to other council members from around the country about our shared interests and challenges and tap into all of the other national local government networks. Thank you, Councillor Donovan. That was a great report. Now, members, are there any other speakers? If not, I'll go back to Councillor Abraham Steve Summer. Thank you, members. Those in favour? Those against? That is carried. Uh, that takes us to item 12, 12.1, progress of motions by elected members. And I'll look for a mover. Thank you, Councillor Sims, and a seconder. Councillor Hyde. Councillor Sims, did you wish to speak? Just my right. Councillor Hyde. <coughs> members? Councillor Sims? Thank you, members. Those in favour? Those against? That is carried. We go to item 13, which is questions on notice. Councillor Moran. I'll take it as, as, um, as asked yeah. and I'll take it as, as, as being given. Okay. okay, that is correct. Thank you. Don't wish me to read that. Everybody's got a copy of the answer there. Thank you, Councillor Moran. That takes us to uh, item 13.2, Councillor Sims. Thanks, Lord Mayor. Can administration please advise whether facial recognition technology is being used for surveillance in the city of Adelaide or whether any trials are being considered? And are you happy for me to read the response? Yes, Thank you. So the city of Adelaide's city safe network is operated by SA Police and does not use any facial recognition technology. The city safe network has been in place since 1994. Currently, there are no planned trials of facial recognition technology. However, we need to replace the current city safe network hardware and software as they have reached end of life. Most modern CCTV technologies do support facial recognition capabilities. However, as the use of facial recognition on the city safe network would be a new enhancement, this would come to the council for decision. It is expected that we will bring a report to committee in January 2020 to discuss the future requirement and the business case associated with the City Safe Network. Thank you, Thank you Councillor. Uh, that takes us to 13, oh, sorry, 15.3, Councillor Hyde. Oh, no, I'm sorry, I've just, I've just skipped a, a whole section. Um, we will go to 13.3, apologies. Councillor Martin. <coughs> Oh, thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, on July 11th, the advertiser reported prospect Mayor uh, David O'Loughlin and Blackfriars, sorry, reported prospect Mayor and Blackfriars Priory School spokesperson David O'Loughlin had entered into what was described as a quote, win win agreement, close quotes, to share part two of the park lands with the Adelaide Football Club in the context of the Crows bid to take over the Aquatic Centre those parts of Part 2 leased by the City of Adelaide to the school for a period of five years. <coughs> Given that the CEO has assured the elected body there has been no decision by Council to endorse the Crows Parklands takeover, could the administration advise one, 
Did the Blackfriars Priory School seek the City of Adelaide's permission to enter into any discussions or agreement with the Crows prior to reaching the reported agreement? Did the Adelaide Football Club seek the City of Adelaide's permission to enter into any discussions or agreement prior to reaching the agreement? Does the school have the authority to enter into any agreement with the Crows in the absence of the explicit approval of the City of Adelaide? Or has the City of Adelaide communicated with Blackfriars Primary since the 11th of July uh, a report of the agreement between the school and the Crows? And if so, did the communication convey any criticism or concern by Council? Five, has the administration seen the reported agreement between Blackfriars Primary School and the Crows? And six, have the actions of the Crows in entering into discussions and or agreement with Blackfriars Priory School over the use of Park 2 when the City of Adelaide has not approved any formal plans or proposal from the club, prejudiced their bid to take over the parklands and the aquatic centre? Thank you, Councillor Martin. Uh, and I'll read the reply. Blackfriars Priory School has not sought the City of Adelaide's permission to enter into any discussion with the Adelaide Football Club, uh, the club, the Crows. The City of Adelaide on the 21st of May 2014 forwarded correspondence to the principal, Mr Simon Kobiak of Blackfires Priory School, informing him in view of media interest and as a current lessee of the current approach by the Adelaide Football Club and that Council would be discussing the matter further when able to do so. Point two, the Adelaide Football Club has not sought the City of Adelaide's permission to enter into any discussions with the with Blackfriars Priory School. 2.1, the City of Adelaide on 29th, uh, sorry, 21st of May 2019, forward correspondence to the Chief Executive Officer, Mr Andrew Fagan of the Adelaide Football Club, informing him of the current lessee and sub lessees arrangements currently associated with it, Dennis, uh, Denise Norton Park. Part, oh, I can't say party part dinier. <laughs> part two, I'm sorry. Um, and requested that this information be considered by the Adelaide Football Club in their development of a proposal. Uh, we are unaware of the govern governance arrangements of Blackfriars Priory School. However, it is a condition of the five-year lease agreement held between Blackfriars Priory School and the City of Adelaide that the lessee seeks the consent of council prior to assigning any portion of the lease land to a third party. 3.1, we have not received such request nor has any approval of this nature been granted to Blackfriars Priory School. Point four, the City of Adelaide has not communicated with Blackfriars Priory School since the report the reported article on the 11th of July 2019. Point five, we have not seen any agreement between the Adelaide Football Club and Blackfriars Priory School. And finally, point six, discussions or agreements that the Adelaide Football Club has with Blackfriars Priory School do not in any way limit or prejudice Council's absolute discretion in respect to the unsolicited bid process or indeed the consideration of any proposal by the Adelaide Football Club in relation to the parklands and the aquatic centre. Party 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 Niela. I will get that. We then go to item 13.4. Councillor Abrian. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, my question is uh, what is the City of Adelaide currently doing to assist staff who may be victims or perpetrators of domestic violence? Lord Mayor, given the um, large response, I'm happy to uh, take it as printed. Uh, thank you. We'll take that as read, um, noting that, of course, that we're committed to providing support to employees that experience family and domestic violence. That takes us to questions without notice. Members, do I have any questions without notice? Councillor Martin. A uh, follow-up question, Lord Mayor, in response to 13.1 uh, definition of standing orders asked by Councillor Moran. Uh, I thank the administration for enlightening us as to the uh, meaning of the term um, public order or morality. Um, the, paper, the response doesn't make clear, however, who it is who makes the decision about what is against uh, public order and morality. Um, is this something that's subject to a committee decision or considered by some other body, or is it something done on the fly? So that, for example, the chair of the meeting would be asked to declare 
this is a public morality issue uh, and therefore morality is offended. How, how, how does it work? We'll ask the CEO that question. Rudy, can you help us answer this question? Through the chair, thank you for the question. Um, it comes down to the Lord Mayor's or the presiding members ruling on that matter at that point in time. So these are just guiding words for the assessment of the Lord Mayor who has opportunities to control behaviour in the chamber. And I refer to section 29 of the meeting regulations here that uh, um, spells out a whole process in that regard. Question. Um, I understand then that at council meetings where the Lord Mayor is presiding, she would make a decision about what offended public morality. Does that mean also at committee meetings, the chair say the Deputy Lord Mayor would make a decision about what offends public morality? And at a meeting of the Strategic Planning Committee, I'm not sure who's chair. Is it, is it you, Francis? Councillor Councillor Abrahimzada would then make a decision about whether someone has offended public morality by a comment they made. Through the chair, Regulation 29, uh, 29 applies to council as well as committee, so indeed the presiding member of the committee uh, as the chair would then be in the position to rule that. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Uh, members, are there any other further questions without notice? Councillor Martin. Just a follow up question again, Lord Mayor, to the um, proposed Adelaide Football Club takeover of the Aquatic Centre and their negotiations with the Blackfriars Priory School. Um, am I correct in reading this response to say that the City of Adelaide has played a completely passive role and has said nothing to the football club, nothing to the school? not a peep to anyone about the negotiation that's occurred between the two parties. Uh, before I hand over to the CEO, Councillor Martin, it's not a uh, takeover, it's an unsolicited solicited bid process that we're going through as endorsed by Council. Oh, look, I'm, um, I'm using CEO, the if I could ask you to answer the question. Thank you. Yeah, through you, Lord Mayor, could you explain what you mean by the word passive? That is to say, we've accepted the newspaper report without comment or feedback to either party uh, and allowed them to continue on uh, with the impression that the council is neutral on their negotiation and doesn't wish to enter into any discussion. Through you, Lord Mayor, my perspective is, is a newspaper article. We are going through, as, a, as the council, um, going through a process for um, the unsolicited proposal in accordance with, with our policy and at the correct time we will engage with the relevant party. So that is the case at this time. It's not been a matter for us. It's a, private, it's a conversation that's been had exclusive of the council. Um, at the right and the correct time, we will be engaging with both parties. And just a, a brief follow up uh, in relation to the answer that's given at six, where it suggests that uh, uh, in uh, confirmation of what the CEO just said, the unsolicited bid process is proceeding. Is it not relevant to a negotiation between the club and the school that they do not understand the terms of the unsolicited bid? Um, do we not feel an obligation to talk to them about that? Talk to who exactly? Either the Crows or the Blackfriars School. I mean, we, we are the only ones in receipt of these unsolicited bid, is that correct? And of course the party. Which is so uh, submitted to the Through Lord Mayor, just to be clear, um, Council's not in receipt of a proposal at this time. So um, there is nothing to communicate with. Once we receive a formal proposal, it'll be referred to you. In that process, we will then identify how we'll communicate it. I'm sorry, I was referring to the conditions that Council has imposed as a consequence of several confidential meetings, and I'm not going to disclose that detail, but is it not relevant to the negotiations between Blackfriars and the Adelaide Football Club that they know what this council's view is about what should happen in that space? Through you, Lord Mayor, it will be when we have that conversation. Thank you. Councillor Martin, do you have any other questions without notice? 
Uh, Members? If not, I will go on to uh, item number 15, which are the motions on notice. Councillor Moran. Um, I move the uh, motion um, as printed that I request the administration prepare a report outlining guidelines around what could constitute an neglected and or derelict property. Request the Lord Mayor to write to the relevant minister seeking greater powers for council to compel landowners to clean up neglected and derelict properties. Um, we know, I know from experience, sorry, don't sorry I'll, I'll just get a oh, second. Sorry. So thank you, Councillor Sims. Thank you, Councillor. Uh, yes, look, um, I moved this before, but it failed because of something, I don't know. Um, but there is a, re uh, a uh, review of the L LNLC Act is currently being undertaken. So this is the time that we should get um, get to the government and ask for greater powers. We see all around us, um, councils are getting, uh, getting in the neck now for not having heritage lists up to date, but we are one council that have slogged through that laborious process with great difficulty and opposition from almost all levels of media when we put uh, lists on uh, heritage listings on property. But this is another bow to, to that. There are often um, derelict or neglected listed properties and unlisted properties. There's one that's currently falling down in Wakefield Street, a real estate office. Uh, there are several in North Adelaide, listed and not listed, but are char of character buildings. So I think that this is important that we um, we plug the leak in this direction as well, as we're doing pretty well in all other areas. Thank you, Councillor Moran. Councillor Sims. Thank you, Lord Mayor. And I want to thank uh, Councillor Moran for putting this forward again and, and persevering with um, this motion. Um, last time we debated this, members might recall I, I moved an amendment um, and that created some uh, division in the council chamber. Um, I don't propose doing so this time, so I, I expect that this will be endorsed unanimously because I think that was the only concern expressed uh, when this was previously discussed. Um, one thing I do want to um, flag with members is when we're uh, developing any guidelines around what uh, constitutes neglect or a derelict property, I think we should take into consideration the financial circumstances of the property owner. Um, I can conceive of circumstances where there could be somebody who is on a very low income um, or uh, maybe not in a position therefore to make some changes to the, um, the property um, because of uh, health or, or income levels and that should be taken into account. But I know that this is um, asking administration to develop some guidelines and also asking the Lord Mayor to write to the Minister um, seeking greater powers for council in this regard. So those issues I'm sure will be dealt with in, um, in due course. But I encourage everybody to vote for this. I think it's a really important um, principle that Councillor Moran is um, promoting here. Um, we know that there are many, many um, properties in our city that have been left to uh, become derelict in a state of disrepair um, and it's a terrible way for our heritage buildings to be treated. So I encourage everybody to support this. Members, any other, spe other speakers to the motion? If not, I'll go back to Councillor Moran to sum up. Summed up. Thank you. Members, those in favour? Those against? That is carried. That takes us to 15.2. Councillor Sims. Thank you, Lord Mayor. I won't um, talk uh, for too long on um, this matter because I, I have spoken um, about it previously. Oh, sorry, I need to actually flag the motion. Um, I move that council supports the regular disclosure of council member contact with developers on an online register and request the administration develop draft guidelines for the disclosure to be presented to council by December 2019. Councillor Martin as a seconder. Thank you. Thanks, Lord Mayor. Look, I don't uh, propose to speak for too long on uh, this item because we have debated this previously um, in the, the council chamber. Um, but I'm bringing it back because when I first proposed this uh, back in May, there was a huge amount of feedback I received from the community. Members of the public uh, contacting me saying, this is a really good idea, keep pursuing this, don't give up. Um, it's very clear to me from the conversations that I've had with the community that they regard this as being a very, very sensible transparency measure. Um, I have made some minor changes based on feedback from the last discussion. I'm asking administration to develop draft guidelines 
um, to uh, govern this disclosure and be presented to Council by December 2019. And that means, Lord Mayor, that if there are elements in terms of how this might work in practice that members are concerned about, they can vote for this motion tonight and we have the opportunity to then consider the draft guidelines um, down the track in December. I want to point out, Lord Mayor, that I think our faith in our democratic institutions is at a low ebb. And part of that is because of the perception that vested interests have a influence over the democratic process. And this uh, developer register is another layer of transparency that could be added to ensure that members of the public can have more faith um, in account and confidence in uh, council's decision making. It ensures that all of um, this contact, any contact that's happening with developers um, is on the public record. And I do believe that the public have a right to know. This isn't about demonising people. I'm certainly not suggesting that anybody is doing the wrong thing here, Lord Mayor, but this is an added layer of transparency. It makes sense and um, I think the time has come for action on this issue. I might add, Lord Mayor, that I know later on tonight we're going to be discussing a proposal around uh, land tax reform and I think it would be a very, very bad look for this council to vote against this transparency measure and then to later back um, a campaign that is being run by vested interests on land tax. I think that would send a very damaging message about this council. It could create the impression that council is being more responsive to campaigns by powerful interest groups than it is to the concerns of the community. And I think that wouldn't be a, a good look for this council. So I encourage members to think carefully about that um, when they consider this issue. Thank you, Councillor Martin. Um, yes, if I might begin with a, a question for the administration first, uh, Lord Mayor. Um, I, there are 6,000 ratepayers in the city, um, 25,000 residents, 100,000 visitors. Um, I, I wonder if the administration could tell me how many developers there are in the city of Adelaide. Is it a big number? Is it 100, 200, 300? Mm -hmm. Three, Lord Mayor, we need to take that on notice. Sorry. But it's not a large number. I mean, we're not talking about half the ratepayers of Adelaide being developers. No. Um, well, look, it, it, it would seem to me that that, in terms of the conflict of interest provisions uh, of the Local Government Act, would represent a small class. Um, and I'm just wondering, Lord Mayor, given that, and uh, given the advice that's been given to us, that we should always look out for our colleagues whether uh, any of the members might want to take advice about um, their status, whether they're a developer or a former developer, or whether they have close associations with developers that might prevent them from participating in this discussion. I don't think there's anything um, that I can see that would actually prevent participation in this discussion. No. And then it's up to individual members whether they believe they should not. So continue. So uh, no one has a uh, conflict clear. Okay, that's good. That's good. Um, look, uh, Lord Mayor, I um, I've uh, taken on board the arguments on previous occasions that Team Adelaide have put that um, the cap process doesn't ever bring developers into contact with the City of Adelaide councillors in a way that would require a register. And so I pulled out the register for the City of Bayswater, which which actually has one. It publishes all of the contact that occurs. And it's fair to say that the circumstances there are slightly different. They do deal with development. But the truth of the matter is that there's substantial contact with developers there that is mirrored here in Adelaide. For example, what's on their register is contact developers have had with uh, Bayswater councillors on verge improvements and the creation of new parking bays. That's something we deal with. Discussion uh, of the creation of a strategic plan for an area, we, we do that. Comments about a community consultation on a development, well, we do that all the time. An approach to discuss the possibility of purchase rather than lease of council property, now, I think that may have happened here. A submission to councillors on the nature of footpath construction outside of the development, we do that, we've done it. <coughs> Invitation to the opening of a new development, well, we get those all the time. In fact, we're all going to one on Friday 
I think, isn't that right? A hotel developer has invited the entire council along. A dispute over an application for a building sign. No, I know about one of those that happened last week. An appeal for council funds for placemaking near a commercial site. Goodness me, that's happened to us too. From lighting to drainage, uh, look, they're all in there. They are all contacts with developers. And the outcome that's been sought by the developers is one that is favourable to them. That is what Councillor Sims is talking about. These are the contacts that these councillors have. Now, Councillor Ho is looking pain there, but I can tell him these discussions are going on all the time. And to not have the transparency of a register like this is to simply turn a blind eye to it. It is a level of governance that is not expected by our ratepayers. It is a transparency that we are obliged to adopt. And look, I tell you, the day will come when the ratepayers of this city will be demanding this because we haven't done it. Members, would anybody else like to speak to this? Was that your hand, Councillor? Yes. Hi, um, I just have a quick question and then I might make some comments. Um, uh, CEO, uh, or through the Lord Mayor, um, when was the last time that this chamber voted on a development approval, a development application? CEO. Through Lord Mayor, no, we don't vote on development applications. That's that's a matter for our opinion. And so when, when was the last time that this chamber made a decision on, on a development? Yeah, I might get Shani to respond. Through the Lord Mayor, um, the question is a little bit complicated to answer. So for all developments under $10 million in the City of Adelaide, all applications are assessed by our Council Assessment Panel, uh, and that panel comprises four independent members and one Council elected member. On the subject of when did this Council make a comment on a development application is a little bit more complex in that um, Council as um, a rate payer uh, as a landowner in the city from time to time gets to comment on developments that are $10 million and over and an example that you may be familiar with um, most recently is a development on Ward Street uh, where this council provided comments um, as an adjoining owner so in the context of being an adjoining owner to, the, to that development. Uh, further to that um, this council provides um, advice uh, and its consent to developers um, for uh, encroachments that encroach into the public realm. Quite complex stuff really that's significant but um, uh, thank you for that thank you for that response. Um, I'll be honest I haven't made my mind up on this one uh, as yet. Um, it's a little less forthright um, then I see you crossing the fingers there. Um, but I would like to make some remarks. Um, the first remark I would make is that the City of Bayswater is entirely irrelevant to this debate. The City of Bayswater is not um, referred to in the motion in the slightest. And, and going on the comments that were made, uh, it sounds like they have a slightly different um, uh, system of maintaining a register. So we can just throw all those comments out there. <laughs> but um, what, what I would say is that I, I just made the remark that I had to Google the City of Bayswater Never heard of them. I've never heard of the Lord Mayor. And that's not to say they're not a great city. I'm, I'm, I'm sure they are. They're sort of in a city, Perth, by the way. So hopefully, hopefully they're, they're good. Um, uh, and and also I would say going to the uh, to Councillor Sims' reference to the to the city of Vincent. I also had to Google them, um, which I've now done. Um, and uh, I prefer to go to the state. Sorry. Um, uh, and uh, so I've now Googled them and, and had a look at them. But of course, uh, so now I know where they are and where they fit into things. But also, again, not a capital city council, um, not a council that has a council assessment panel model. Um, so a council very different to how we operate in South Australia, very different to how we operate um, uh, in the city of Adelaide. So I'd just like to make those couple of points as well. Um, uh, now, of course, before I just Googled the city of Vincent, I did do my due diligence and, and dug up the policy that was, um, well, that is referred to in Councillor Sims' um, motion. I will say it does seem um, very draconian uh, for a council that uses our model. I, I would also say that maybe I'm not being familiar with Western Australia and their model. Uh, maybe it's more appropriate for them. Um, uh, but I'd leave you with, I'd just leave you with one 
little bit of information. My reading on it, my reading on it indicates that the only member of this chamber who would be exempt based on this model that has been suggested by Council Sims, the only member of this chamber who would be exempt from a recording on the register is uh, the person that we sent to the council assessment panel because they're conducting those conversations throughout the course of their business. Um, so I would just, I'd just like to impress upon members, and like I said, the jury's out on this because we're just developing guidelines and what, what, what have you, you know, it's a pretty flaccid motion. Um, but uh, the one person who actually does get to make a decision on development from this chamber is the only person who won't be required to record on this register. Um, so I'd just like to highlight um, uh, that uh, to the chamber and everyone watching at home. Uh, it seems it seems pretty inconsequential to me, but look, uh, I may well be happy to see what administration can start. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Moran. Uh, yes, as the member being referred to is on the, on the uh, panel uh, before I'm booted off to be replaced by a Team Adelaide member, I would say that I would be the one person that would be top of the pops on that um, register. And that's why I moved a couple of meetings ago that there was a voluntary register because I would like to be on that register. I do not meet with developers because I am on um, DAP or SCAP or whatever it's called now. Uh, so I strictly avoid it. Occasionally I come into contact through my daily life with them and I would like on um, developers who talk to me about other things like parking changes in North Adelaide and things like that, I would like to be able to register that so that um, so that that's, it's explained what my meeting is. Um, having been on council for a long time, I've seen what not having a register does. Not having a register um, can bring great clouds of doubt over certain councillors. Our current, our current system, as we've seen with the post-it note, is not sufficient. Um, we need to get another level. Um, I'm not sure whether this is the other level. That's why I'm happy to look at draft guidelines. I'm not sure whether this is a good one or not, but we need something else. Um, we have often witnessed, and there's nothing we can do about it, councillors swanning off and going and seeing developers. Um, of course, nobody in this room here, but in 24 years, I've certainly seen it. Um, in um, relation to our buying of 88 O'Connell Street, for instance. I'm sure the councillors are here before will know what I'm talking about there. We need a register because we don't know whether it's above board or it's not above board. If you've got nothing to hide, hide nothing. I want to put my stuff on a register. I don't mean, I remember Alex Hart said last time, oh my God, I haven't got time to do that. How many developers are you meeting with? Um, you know, it is not arduous. So I really think that um, it would be better that you you did vote for this this time. I think it would um, show people that you have got nothing to hide and it would protect people like me that is on SCAP from explaining meetings with developers that aren't planning meetings. And once again, I'd ask if you don't want to do it, let, let, let it be voluntary. So the SCAP member wouldn't be exempt. The SCAP member would absolutely have to put um, um, I read in off the record in the advertiser that um, they'd be given the names of the two preferred tenders for Aviator O'Connell Street. Now, I don't know who they were, but somebody on this council does and has spoken to the press. And I will be asking for a full investigation into that. Instead of wasting time on silly code of conducts, we should be looking at things that really are going wrong with this council. That was a shameful thing, and I don't know, I will be talking to the CEO later, whether it's a staff member or if it's one of us, but that has to be looked at. Um, we are doing, I don't know where Bayswater is either, but it sounds like a very good system. And just because it's not in the Eastern States doesn't mean we ignore it. So it sounds like a good example of what a good council does. Members, you've already spoken, Councillor Martin. Uh, I'll come back to you. Sorry, I had a couple of other hands. So I've got Councillor Ho and Deputy Lord Mayor. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Look, I wasn't going to speak to this. I wanted to sort of listen to the debate to see if there's going to be any change from the existing rhetoric that we've been hearing on repeat. Um, again, a couple of things that have been brought up today that I think needs to be clarified. The City of Vincent talks about prescribed contact, and prescribed contact means 
when someone contacts you with regards to a development that is occurring and they've lodged a DA or about to lodge a DA. That, that is a prescribed measure of contact that needs to be declared. Under the same provisions of this council, if that has occurred and this decision was to come to chamber, we have to declare a conflict of interest in this chamber, be it perceived actual or material. We have to do that. That's the reality of how we function. If a developer approaches this council where they want to do a JV on an improvement of a footpath, it has to come through here. And if any of us have been influenced by that developer or to do business by that developer, they must declare a perceived material or actual conflict. That is the, that's the matter of the fact. And if they don't do that, we've heard from the Ombudsman before, goes through an investigation process, comes back to council, is there ramifications attached to that? That's a very clear process, already, already drawn out. And it's something that already happens all the time. What Councillor Moran was referring to before with regards to the posted issue, that is a register of interest issue. That is a complete separate discussion to what this is. Both have merit, and these are debates that I've flagged before in a paper of areas where we could potentially improve to make our process better. <coughs> no one's taking away from that. With that in mind, I'm gonna tag along with this a little bit just to see if we can get some consensus. And I'm gonna propose we move an amendment on this issue as follows. And the amendment would be that council, as is, delete item one. I'll explain why in a minute. Item two to read requests that administration investigate instead of develop draft guidelines for the disclosure of council member contact with developers happy to leave with particular consideration to the city of vincent sorry just a second deputy lord mayor if you go investigate draft guidelines for draft guidelines for the disclosure of council members contact with developers okay thank you with particular consideration given to the city of vincent policy 4.1215 council member contact with developers as it is no change and improvements in the register of interest process. To be presented to council by December 2019. And I'll seek a second and I'll speak to this, if that's all right. So, Councillor Abraham today. So the first reason to why I think it's important to delete support the regular disclosure of contact members with developers online register is because, if I can seek a, an extension board now, if that's okay. Thank you. Uh, if I could, um, the reason I want to delete the first item is because we're not supporting the regular disclosure as yet until we do an investigation. Let's work out if this is a good process. Let's work out if this is uh, a process that we should adopt and it's the best practice. Melbourne's not doing it. Sydney's not doing it. No other capital city in Australia that I know of is doing it, but maybe we should be the leaders and maybe we should do it. But let's investigate that. Let's get an answer on that. Um, and based on that basis, then we can make a decision as a council if we wish to proceed or not. The other thing I want to note that I'm sick and tired of is demonising ratepayers in the city of Adelaide. We might as well change that developer to ratepayer because they are ratepayers in the city of Adelaide, just like every other ratepayer. And I think if we want to go as far as disclosing every contact with ratepayer, I would go as far as disclosing every contact with ratepayer. Ratepayers that lobby councillors to benefit a park right in front of their house will have an increase in valuation in their property. Will that, is that a conflict of interest? They're doing their job. They're asking for the curb to be fixed. They're asking for a tree to be planted. That's why we're here to engage with our ratepayers. Every time you have contact with one of your ratepayers that asks you to improve their public realm in their street, you are improving their house value. They're, you're improving, you're improving their life. As a result, you are putting money directly in their pocket. That's exactly what you're doing in the way of evaluation. It is our job in this city to engage with every single ratepayer in the city of Adelaide without having to demonise ratepayers that are investing heavily in our city. Without the development sector, without the construction sector that is consistently 
spending money and investing the money in the city of Adelaide, we will not see growth. If there's no growth, there is no 80% of rates coming in from business. $18 million out of 100 million that fund residential amenities, that fund residential services. It is our job to speak to all rate payers in the city. Stop, please. I can't stand it anymore. I'm going to vote for it. Councillor Moran, thank you. It is Dealing our job to support like every rate payer in the city. This is a sensible approach to a motion to investigate before we make a decision. This is not final. Investigate first. We'll call it in December. Thank you, Deputy Lord Mayor. Uh, Councillor Abraham today as a oh, seconder. Well, well, well. Thank you. I actually had Councillor Hyde, then Councillor Martin, and then Councillor Sims. Councillor Hyde. Councillor Hyde. I was going to talk about the, the motion. Ah, okay. All right. Like that. Yeah. <laughs> Hold that one, Councillor Martin. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Look, I do want to congratulate uh, the uh, Deputy Lord Mayor on his change of heart. It, it does take a lot after having argued so strenuously against this concept for so many months, three three times, I think it's been in here. So it, it does take courage to go back and say, well, look, I was wrong. Now, look, I, I do want to say- Just to correct on the record, please, Lord Mayor, I uh, did not say wrong at all. England. And I'm not Thank changing you. my mind. My Thank you, members. Remains. Thank my you. Remains so you're clear. I do not support a register of interest, just so you know. Deputy right. Lord Mayor, if you could take your seat. Councillor Martin. Continue. Sorry. I'm I'm, I'm, members. I'm trouble, Lord Mayor. Members. Are you running the meeting or is the Deputy Lord Mayor? Well, I'm trying to run the meeting, but I've got councillors from both sides actually talking at the moment. When they finish, then we will go back to you, Councillor Martin. Thank you. Um, look, I, uh, I'm just delighted uh, whether he doesn't agree that he's changed his mind or not, that the Deputy Lord Mayor is supporting something that is very similar to what's been proposed. But look, I must say, um, we are not a leader, as the uh, uh, Deputy Lord Mayor was saying, uh, we are followers. Um, this is a measure that has been introduced into a number of councils. And um, uh, I, uh, to help uh, uh, Councillor Hyde and the Deputy Lord Mayor understand, um, Bayswater is actually the, uh, the council that surrounds Perth. Um, 37 square kilometres, about 65,000 people. It's a little country town, yes, it is a little country town. If Perth can do it, if a major metropolitan city thinks it's important enough for us to be talking about, issues related to developers in a register, then it's good enough for us. And I, look, I don't buy this argument that, you know, this is all about growth. This is all about making sure this city thrives. This is about making sure that we are transparent. And there are developer conversations that go on. And look, the, uh, the staff have already explained to us that there are occasions where council has active conversations with developers. There are occasions when developers, comes, uh, developers come to council with specific particular proposals. <laughs> uh, one of those, Lord Mayor, and I, I won't breach confidence by saying this, is that in a secret meeting, we were asked to commit to a developer plan that was going to cost this council $25 million over um, 28 years. It was a 28 million over 25 years. If that was in confidence, then I believe that the, all the discussion is in confidence, Councillor. The whole lot. You can't yes, that's what, a conf that's what a confidentiality no, order I, is. Lord Mayor, I retract that. I, I don't remember anything about anything. No, situation. obviously. You're in breach of confidence right now, so be careful, please. Okay, well, look, I, uh, I, I thought by not oh, mentioning oh, yeah. the detail, um, it was okay. <laughs> Apparently not. So, look, the point is, and, and I do beg your indulgence because I have members, been interrupted. Members, thank you. An extra minute. The point is that this is a measure that has been adopted in other places. It is prudent of this council to investigate it as is proposed. And I would hope that after the information comes back to us, after the administration has had a chance to look at what other capital cities are doing, like Perth, that it will present to us a set of recommendations and we can adopt. If, if I can just correct you there, Councillor, it's not Perth, it's Bayswater. There are no other capital cities that actually have a register. Um, I'll no. go to Councillor Sims. No, Lord Mayor, look, I, I, there it is on-, on it, It's not on, the city of Perth, 
bayswater bay water is in Western Australia. Bay, it's not the city the of Bayswater is a local government area in the heart of the east of Western Australia's capital, the city of Perth. Seven kilometres. That's, that's actually like saying um, Walkerville. So it's not the capital city of Perth. It is in Perth, it's as in metropolitan capital. Perth. Yeah, Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Sims. Thank you, Lord Mayor. And what an exciting night for the city of Adelaide, a historic night if we're going to become the first capital city in the country to develop uh, these kinds of guidelines. I mean, we should really be leading the nation when it comes to um, transparency. And so this is a big win. Um, a big win for people power because the community have been campaigning very hard on this over the last few months. Um, Lord Mayor, I do want to uh, acknowledge um, uh, the Deputy Lord Mayor's leadership on this. Um, I appreciate him trying to meet me in the middle here. I think this is actually pretty similar to what I proposed in that um, <clears throat> I was asking Council to uh, commit to the principle and then to have some guidelines come back to Council for consideration. However, um, I recognise if this is going to get the, the motion over the line um, tonight, then I'm very happy to um, support it. I'm not sure what improvements we can make to the register of interest process, um, because I think it is fairly straightforward, but I'm welcome to, uh, uh, very open to um, looking at what opportunities there are in, in that regard. So I think this is a, an exciting night for the City of Adelaide. We should be a leader when it comes to transparency and best democratic practice. And the fact that no other uh, city council in the country does this, I think, is another reason for us to champion this kind of um, reform, because we should be a leader, not a laggard, when it comes to transparency. Uh, thank you. I have Councillor Hyde, then Councillor Knoll, then Councillor Kerrow. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, I must say, I still remain unconvinced, or a little bit more convinced, um, with this particular motion. I do like that we got rid of the motherhood statement at the start. I think that's, that's always nice. We should always keep things um, very tight and to the point. <laughs> um, uh, and uh, I do also like that we're going to look at the register of interest process. Um, I mean, look, my register's up to date and very confident with that, but it can be a little bit arduous. And, and there must be at least four or five different points of contact before it actually gets to where it needs to be. So um, look, if there's a methodology whereby we can update our own Register of interest um, that uh, saves the city of Adelaide money and time, um, uh, and really makes us more accountable to our ratepayers um, if we want to talk about transparency. Um, so yeah, I still remain unconvinced um, that this policy will really be best practice. Um, uh, but uh, look, uh, I think we'll, we'll hear out what the administration's investigation is and what their report comes back with, and uh, think about it in due course. Thank you. Thank you. I'll have Councillor Knoll. I mean, I am also a little bit tired of it going around in circles because, I mean, uh, I come out of an industry that has so many regulations and so many requirements and, uh, you know, the transparency and doing more than what you need to to actually deliver that is, you know, it just incurs cost and, and also all these unnecessary needs. The other problem we have is that in this sort of situation, inadvertent things that even don't relate to this register can be taken. So if you can tell you a moment where you're going out like I did uh, the Trailblazers event and I happened to meet a wife of a, of, a, of a developer, didn't know who she was in the first place. The fact that you were there, the fact that uh, you know, you're know you in the same space doesn't mean that you're talking about anything because it's just, in, uh, you know, because it's, uh, just part of the, the process, but uh, it can be then inferred. And so you now have a register, you do these sorts of things, sitting over and above, um, uh, what you need to do when you're actually speaking on behalf of council, uh, that's a separate issue. That's, that should be and can be possibly done. But there are, there are so many ways that you can get unintended consequences where uh, you can be then uh, said, are you having meetings when truly these things don't come up? So I just see that, you know, and we're talking about, uh, we, we have, again, we do not, uh, you know, uh, have any, anything over these sorts of uh, deliberations. But I mean, there is a difference between the council as the administration and us as councillors. Administration speaking on behalf of council, uh, that's a different conversation completely because they are doing it because uh, they're, they're giving their opinion on what they are required to do. And these things are then a matter of course, these are things are on record. Um, we look at the uh, also, as again, as, uh, as the Deputy Lord Mayor said, we have so many other people who get the interest out of these sorts of things, and it's uh, and they are all actually not even contributing towards the greater good in that sense. They're here, they're taking advantage of our city, but you know 
that they're getting advantage uh, out of that. And certainly, if it's going to be one group of the uh, of the population, it theoretically should be all groups of the population who have an interest, and it can be the community groups and whatever else, because they all benefit. Uh, at least with the developer who don't speak to us, uh, they are actually contributing to uh, improvements in the city, and they also have needs and needs of, uh, for within their own commercial ad, uh, side that they uh, so that they're able to have uh, their commercial advantage in when they're trying to do a development where we have no influence of it anyway. They do need to have their anonymity so that they can uh, get their best position as a commercial entity anyway. So why should we uh, start to impose things and restrict their ability to talk with us? Um, even when we don't have any influence over uh, their, you know, their businesses. And I think it's really, um, you know, we are only restricting ourselves. That means that we're now going to become less and less connected with our community. And it's going to be fair. It should be everybody that has an interest. Because if you want to do that, okay, go do that. At least we're all equal. And equal is what we should be talking about. Thank you. I have Councillor Kerra. Thanks, Lord Mayor. Um, Look, uh, I, I think this is a good, sensible way forward through this uh, thorny thicket. Um, I think that, uh, um, look, uh, conf conflict of interest, a lot of the uh, a lot of the law and the basis of conflict of interest rests on perception, um, quite properly uh, rests on perception. And uh, it is a fact that there is a perception out there uh, in the public that uh, developers, or perhaps more relevantly development, uh, has uh, an undue influence in, in, in matters of concern. Um, I think this is because development is uh, what changes, what can dramatically change a cityscape. Uh, and in particular, you know, what can see heritage get, uh, get knocked over. Um, so I think that it, it you know, it, uh, rather than perhaps you know, demonising developers, I think it is, it is where this has merit it is addressing that quite legitimate uh, view of the public that there is influence in anything to ease the mind of the public uh, is, is, is probably welcome. However, on the other side, there is an issue. There, is, there are issues with implementation. There are issues with this being just onerous. There are real issues with capturing members and, and tracking them uh, because you may be speaking to someone and you have no idea that they're a developer and someone later on will come along and say, oh, gotcha. And unfortunately, things have become so increasingly adversarial uh, in, 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 in politics and in local government that that is, that is a serious concern. So, so there are strong arguments on both sides. I think this is a good way forward. So um, I'll be supporting the event. Thank you, Councillor Kerr. Councillor Moran? Um, I, of course, will be supporting it because I see absolutely no difference except the addition of the uh, register of interest in the original motion. Uh, as Councillor Hyde said, the motherhood statement, I can't actually remember what number one was, but uh, if it was indeed motherhood, then it doesn't change the meaning of this motion at all. So I, I give, I think, fair credit to uh, Councillor Sims for persevering with this. Um, and I think Councillor Kerr really ably summed up why we have persevered with it. It is the perception. It's not meant to, as um, Councillor Canole said, if you're bumping to somebody at a party and they have a chat over a drink, it's not meant that. So it's when you arrange to meet a developer or a developer arranges to meet with you to discuss something. And I can assure you that the path of this council is zigzagged with very questionable meetings between developers and councillors. Uh, there was a time that real estate agents weren't allowed to be on the city council because they were considered to have too many conflicts of interest. We now let you in, but we do expect because of, and we have a developer as well in Councillor um, Abiad. So um, we have opened the doors to people that are dealing in their normal life with developers. And rather than resist that, I think those two people in particular should embrace it because it's a protection, not a danger. Um, to say that when we discuss curbs and we're increasing the value of property is, is to take it to the lunatic degree to try and bring his own motion down. I don't understand that. But credit to Rob Sims where um, it, uh, it started. This is a much stronger motion than the one I moved last time that you all voted against, that it was a voluntary register. So thank, thank you for not voting for that because we've ended up with a much better one. Uh, members, Councillor Ho. Lord, may I just have a question to ask? I'd like to ask 
either the either like Cantonese really like what kind of developers are we referring to here? Are we talking about the developers who are the member of the property council, or are we talking about the developers who have got a sign in the city or have a proposal to do a development project in the city, or are we talking about the developers who are doing projects in the suburbs or in other states or even in other countries? Because, like Councillor Murray mentioned, I need to map. I need to meet with developers very often. I can tell you, I need to meet with developers on a daily basis. I need to communicate more than 20 developers on a daily basis, phone calls, emails, WeChat, whatsoever. But I have never ever come into any conversations like what Councillor Martin have mentioned before. Lord Mayor, I'm keep telling people that Adelaide is a good place to invest. I try to encourage people who have invested somewhere else to come to Adelaide to invest. Have I done anything wrong? No. All right. So really, and I don't understand. There's another thing I don't understand that like look for council members to meet with politicians. Oh, we are politics. We are politicians. As I, I, as I, I was just got told. And uh, for, for council members to meet with like politicians, criminals. Lobby groups, business owners, property owners. Do we need to do we need to put a register on it? It doesn't look like we, we, we need to, right? So I just got no idea. I'm not sure whether or not I will support the original motion or support the amendment. I don't know. It's just interesting. I I, I like to know what kind of guidelines that the admin would like to put on. And because look. To recall all the conversations and meetings I have with so-called developers, it will cost me about an hour a day. I couldn't afford to do it. Thank you. Councillor Hyde, you've already spoken. You may have a question. Um, I just uh, to administration. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, my reading of, of, the, uh, of the City of Vincent thing, and I don't know if anyone else here has even read it, but... Um, so it's been circulating a lot. Uh, is that anyone who has put in a development application or is thinking about putting in a development application, whether they're wanting to build something that's worth $9,999,000 or whether they're wanting to put a new veranda on their backyard, all these things are encompassed. So is, that, is, that, is that the correct reading? Um, through the Lord Mayor, um, the City of Adelaide receives approximately a thousand development applications a year um, and they're registered development applications. We have a public register of those development applications and they are anything from a sign um, right through to a, an eight or nine storey building under nine million, nine, 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 nine hundred thousand dollars. Yes, but my, um, my, I mean, my, my reading of it, I suppose it's a yes or no question um uh it's it's everyone everyone who puts in or plans to put in so you could go and talk to your neighbor and say oh i'm, I'm thinking or someone could come and talk to me and say oh i want to put um, a new pergola in my backyard you know what do you think of that um i believe so and uh sorry councillor martin you have spoken I'm asking a <coughs> you may ask a question thank you it's of the administration uh, I have listened to the questions that Councillor uh, Ho has raised. I have listened to Councillor Hyde. In the motion that is before the Council, which asks the administration to investigate draft guidelines, is the administration going to go away and investigate, or is it already decided on avenues of investigation? That is to say, is that not just a broad enough direction for you? Through the Mayor, we would, um, we would investigate and provide quality advice to Council, so that's a project. I never doubted it, thank you. Um, members, I will, just before I ask the Deputy Lord Mayor to sum up, um, uh, there are already significant legislative requirements in place. So just, so we've got the Register of Interest requirement, conf conflict of interest provisions around matters to be discussed at Council meetings. We've got code of conduct provisions around improper use of your position as council members. We've got South Australian councillors operate under the council assessment panel and the state commission assessment panel, so CAP, uh, which is our council one and SCAP. 
um, which is unlike a lot of our interstate councillors. And we've also got additional conduct requirements in terms of disclosure revisions existing for those members of CAP. Um, there, there is no other capital city that has this, and it, it could be construed because um, it does also say in the uh, City of Vincent one that it's means of communication or conversation, regardless of whether it's foreseen, regardless of whether it's planned, solicited or reciprocated, um, and then it is all, all forms of communication, whether it's telephone, email, written, face-to-face -face and the like, unlike what Councillor Moran actually just said when she was speaking, that was uh, quite different to what is in this policy. So I'll be interested to see what comes back. Um, it could be construed, I actually also agree with Councillor Kerra, um, certainly could be construed as politics rather than policy. So I'll be interested to see uh, what comes back into the chamber. Um, though perhaps a register for CAP members may actually, uh, those that are actually um, meeting with developers on an ongoing basis, which is pres prescribed contact. So that is direct contact, contact to in, uh, discuss the development or the development proposal. Um, perhaps that is something we could consider within that. Um, also, we need to be uh, aware of adding to the administrative burden of all the conflicts that we already have in place. Um, I will go to Deputy Lord Mayor to summer. Thank you, Lord Mayor. And look, it's funny, we spent a good half an hour talking about public perception because that's all we're trying to do with here. And then after here, we're going to finish off and spend $1,000 a week on hospitality that the public doesn't know anything about. So very interesting how we play the games on council and what we try to wield in our interest versus in other people's interest. But first and foremost, this is a very different motion to what was proposed by Councillor Sims. Councillor Sims' intent is to support a regular disclosure of council members contact with developers. My intent is not. I am giving the opportunity, I am, that's why this was removed, I am giving the opportunity to administration and to council members to convince me otherwise. I'm given the opportunity for an investigation to happen, for a report to come back to convince me that we need to do this. That is the only thing I'm doing to give you, councillor, the benefit of the doubt on this issue, hoping that on other issues you will reciprocate, which you haven't done today. Oh, I always. So it is really important to note that what I'm pushing for here is not the same as before. I'm not asking you to develop guidelines, I'm asking to investigate and look at if it's something we need to do. That's what I'm asking for. And I'm asking clearly to remove the first item which supports it. I already think that we put our rate pays through a lot. I think our business community suffers already a lot. We need to attract more people into our city. We're having to debate a lot of issues. After that, land tax, BG increased in valuation, 7% Can you foreign investment motion? tax. A significant amount of things that are coming that have impact on rate payers and developers in the city of Adelaide. We don't want to add the burden. We want to make it easier to be engaging with their council. After all, they elect us. And that's our job to keep engaging with them. So I'd ask members to support this. We will see the response to investigate in December, and if the facts are there, and it's the intent of council to pursue this further, and I'm convinced, I will support it. Otherwise, it's a no from me. Members, uh, we now go to the vote. Those in favour? Those against? That is carried. Division. <laughs> <laughs> Council's division has been called on the amendment. Those in favour of the amendment, please rise and remain standing until all names have been called. Councillor Martin, Councillor Ho, the Deputy Lord Mayor, Councillor Carer, Councillor Donovan, Councillor Hyde, Councillor Moran and Councillor Sims. Thank you. That now becomes the substantive. I'll go to Councillor Oh, Is there any further discussion? I'll go to Councillor Sims to sum up. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Look, um, I think we some of us had to be dragged uh, to the finishing line, but we got there um, in the end. And um, I'm really excited about this outcome. Um, Councillor uh, uh, Abiyad said that um, this is uh, very different to what I put forward. It's not um, in effect, Lord Mayor. I propose that we get draft guidelines developed, that we're going to come back to Council. Um, that's what's going to happen now. We'll get an investigation and um, we'll get some guidelines back for us to consider. And that's what I've been asking all along. Um, I think this is a, a really good outcome here. 
Um, you know, when I put this forward some time ago, I talked about the fact that um, faith in politics is at a low end. Part of that is because people perceive that vested, vested interests are having an undue influence over the democratic process. And I think that anything that we can do to improve transparency, we should look at. I know some councillors are madly keen on what the City of Vincent have been doing. This uh, motion simply says that we should give consideration to what they're doing. If elements of what they're doing aren't workable, we don't have to implement it here in Adelaide. But I've referenced them because they've won a national award for transparency and accountability in local government. And so they are regarded as the benchmark for transparency. And I think we should be leaders in this space. The first a level of elected government in our country. It makes sense that we should champion best practice. And with respect, Lord Mayor, that's not playing politics, that's good policy. And I think um, I look forward to the outcome of this uh, investigation. Thanks everybody. I encourage you to support this. This is a great win for um, the community and uh, a great win for local democracy. Members, those in favour? Those against? That is carried. Councillor Ho? Well, it's now the substantive, so we're voting for it. Thank you. Division. Council's division has been called on the motion. Those in favour of the motion, please rise and remain standing until all names have been called. Councillor Martin, Councillor Ho, and the Deputy Lord Mayor, Councillor Carer, Councillor Donovan, Councillor Hyde, Councillor Moran, and Councillor Sims. Members, that takes us to item 15.3, Councillor Hyde. One has the energy left. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, I move this motion as it appears in the uh, terms on the notice. Paper. <laughs> I saw two hands go up at the same yeah. time. Uh, Councillor Moran. Thank Councillor you, Lord Hyde. Mayor. Uh, thank you, Lord Mayor. It's a great um, uh, pleasure uh, to be moving this motion. Um, today in the chamber and uh, of course at the outset um, I would like to highlight to, to everyone here um, uh, and the gallery as well um, this is of course an initiative of the official partner um, uh, of the Lord Mayor, Mr Greg Mitchell um, uh, and when uh, the idea uh, was originally floated with me I was very very keen on it um, and very supportive of it having worked with um, men's sheds uh, previously in the past I understand um, uh, the importance that they have and of course this, this, uh, this speaks to a, a few things, um, uh, combating social isolation in our community, um, uh, particularly uh, as people get older. Um, of course, you know, we understand that um, men, you know, when they're too old to keep going to the footy club or they leave work and that sort of thing, um, uh, sometimes they may struggle to, to, to find a new, new place in the world and have a, a shed or a man cave that they might be able to retreat into. Um, uh, and enjoy themselves. Um, and of course, this allows them uh, to seek that um, and also seek uh, friendship, uh, potentially new friendship as well, um, as they do so. Uh, it's also about active aging, Lord Mayor, which, um, uh, which I think is very important as well. Um, and it's about older persons' mental health. Um, and I think what struck me the most throughout the conversation um, uh, that was had was uh, uh, when it was outlined, particularly with um, uh, particularly with uh, social isolation is um, is that uh, your partner Greg um, saw what happened when uh, his uh, father and uncle um, went through what I've just described um, uh, and he's obviously come to the same conclusion that many many others have and of course many in metropolitan Adelaide as well because there are many men um, uh, and uh, thought that this would be a good way forward of course it does also um, uh, pay tribute to his passions uh, uh, as a man who works with his hands um, uh, and someone who enjoys time in the shed, uh, as I understand it as well. So um, it's for those reasons that uh, I'm very pleased to support this motion. Um, uh, I think it fits, uh, fits in well with what we want to achieve in the city of Adelaide. Uh, we already do a lot uh, to support older people in our community um, and to support active ageing. Um, uh, and I, I commend this motion, particularly as we look to be a city that is designed for life. Um, uh, and of course, we are designed for all stages of life. Thank you, Councillor Moran. Um, just very briefly, um, I commend this motion and commend Councillor Hyde for bringing it up. Uh, I don't know why we haven't thought about this before, but also where are the women's sheds? I suppose we've got <laughs> other sheds. Um, I've been, uh, have been followed uh, just uh, 
serendipitously, my um, brother-in-law in Melbourne, who's an actuary, um, oversaw the finances of the um, men's shed in Federation Square. And uh, we went down to see it and uh, hearing from him the terrific process. It's not just old, old people, it's, it's all men. Um, and uh, I, I always admired that. And I, as I said, I, I kick myself that we let the, the young Turks bring it in and not the uh, experienced members. Um, but it was, uh, it, was a very, it is a very good initiative and it's, it is a shame that we haven't, what, what I'm saying is we should have had one already. Um, it's, um, it gives men um, uh, some social contact uh, in an increasingly um, urbanised lifestyle of the inner city. Um, my father and my grandfather, everybody's here, would have had a, a shed in the back of their house. So it's a very quirky title. But I think it's a marvellous idea and we should really fast track, really get our skates on and get this moving um, to help vulnerable men, lonely men, just men that want to seek companionship and do something. Also, they make terrific things. It's, it's a very productive thing. Children's toys and it really harnesses all the um, skills that these men have. So uh, once again, I thank Councillor Hyde. It's a terrific idea, a terrific initiative. Thank you, members. Councillor Abraham today. Thank you, Lord Mayor. I, uh, I too commend uh, Mr. Greg Mitchell for flagging such an initiative with uh, Councillor Hyde. And I do agree with uh, Councillor Moran, Moran in terms of uh, um, having that gendered shed, men and women. Um, I know that uh, for us men, we, um, we handle stress and stressful situations differently. Uh, we don't uh, talk about our feelings. We, are, uh, we don't deal with uh, mental health issues as well as uh, women. I know when it comes to uh, suicide rates, men are three times more likely uh, to commit suicide uh, than women. And when you look at uh, uh, Aboriginal, Aboriginal men, uh, they are six times more likely uh, to commit suicide than, uh, 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 than those who are non-Aboriginal. Um, uh, I used to be a, uh, uh, a Rotarian and the uh, Rotary chapter that I was a member of, they used to run a men's shed and they used to call themselves the Toy Boys, uh, purely because they used to make toys and, uh, and donate them during Christmas. <laughs> so, uh, so, so maybe that's something that uh, this uh, men's shed could, uh, uh, could do and be involved in. I'll, I'll be more than happy to put my hand up and be one of the Toy Boys and I'm sure Councillor Hyde would too. So uh, I encourage all members. Uh, to, to be a part of uh, <laughs> part of this men's shed, and uh, uh, and again, I uh, commend Councillor Hyde and um, urge members to support this. Members, um, I'd also like to thank Councillor Hyde for bringing the motion through. Um, Greg has spent about six months of his own time and energy researching the men's sheds, and uh, it's a, a real passion project. And I'd like to thank the administration for um, helping. Um, it becomes third place, so and it's not excluding women either. I was very clear to say it might be called a men's shed because we all understand the concept. Um, but a lot of women um, have been excluded from sheds for uh, many years, and so um, there may be separate programs for men and women or whatever. But it's, there's also the ability, uh, uh, in addition to the social engagement, for mentoring for those uh, more mature gentlemen that do have great skills to pass on to the next generation coming through. Um, so I really look forward to this uh, this coming to to be to existence, and I'll hand back to Councillor Hyde. Thank you, Lord Mayor. And yes, it was uh, of course remiss of me um, uh, to exclude women when that never was the intention um, uh, from from the beginning. Uh, so we might have to rethink the term um, "toy boys" if we're going to have sort of co-educational space. Oh, that could um, stay there. <laughs> Uh, and uh, yes, uh, once again, I just want to pay tribute to the work that's already been done on this. Um, I, I do understand uh, why we call it work. I think Greg had a, a pretty good time going around all the various men's sheds um, uh, around the metropolitan area and, and seeing what works well um, and all that sort of stuff. And um, for my part, um, previously working with men's sheds, um, uh, they do they do do something that is that is so so important. Um, uh, and, and the best ones I've seen operate actually include women in it as well, whether it's a veterans men's shed or, or ones with, with other um, particular slants. So um, on that note, I, I want to commend this again um, uh, to all of you here, and uh, I look forward to this coming back to us and uh, us getting this up and running as soon as possible. Thank you, Councillor. Members, those in favour? 
Those against, that is carried. That takes us to uh, 15.4, Councillor Hyde. Thank you, Lord Mayor. I move this motion in the terms that it appears on the notice paper and seek a seconder. Sorry, I had Councillor Abraham today. Okay. Um, thank you, Lord Mayor. Well, I was very surprised uh, when I read the answer to my question on notice. Um, at the last meeting, that um, despite uh, despite pollen being such a, uh, a large issue in the city of Adelaide, um, that we don't have a strategy to manage it. And of course, when I say it's a large issue, I'm, I'm at pains to say that it's a good problem to have. It means we have a lot of trees, um, and that's something we don't want to uh, we don't want to change. We like our trees; they add so much to our uh, to our streetscape, um, also to our just general well-being in the city of Adelaide. Um, uh, but I think it's time, and, and it certainly comes up every year, and it came up last year before I was on council. Um, uh, it's time that we think about managing particularly the plane tree pollen uh, in the city. I mean, we see it happen every year, um, uh, like clockwork, uh, where you see the pollen bombs and they're there now, they're getting ready, they're getting bigger, they're getting ready to drop. Um, and it won't be very long before they start making an absolute mess um, uh, on our streets. Um, uh, and making uh, life very, very difficult, of course, for people who are asthmatic um, and people who have hay fever. And uh, those people, of course, deserve to enjoy the city of Adelaide uh, just like anyone else. In fact, I would love to see more of them coming in um, uh, and enjoying the city um, and spending money in our precincts um, and adding to our community. So, um, and of course, when we talk about uh, our precincts as well, uh, we have to mention that a lot of traders that have outdoor dining um, find the local pollen, particularly where uh, there are plane trees, uh, to be a significant issue, um, not least of all because we don't allow uh, very comprehensive structures around outdoor dining as well, so there really is no protection. Um, and of course, it won't be long before we see some parts of the city, if we don't manage it, where the pollen is piled up inches high, um, uh, and this causes a, a huge issue for people. So, um, in, uh, in, in speaking to this motion, I'd like to highlight to administration as well that um, Look, I'm not a doctor. Um, I'm also uh, not someone who works in the public realm team. Um, uh, but I would just highlight that uh, when investigating uh, the viability and, and coming back with a proposal for the sanitisation strategy, um, uh, perhaps leaf blowers going around in the morning and whipping up all the pollen is not the best way to go about it because that would probably actually <coughs> put more into the air. Obviously, the street sweepers that come through anyway um, uh, come through and vacuum it up, so that's fine. Um, uh, so I would urge you to think about that um, uh, when considering this motion. Um, and as well, it, just in concluding, I would say that I would really like this to be done within our operational budgets as they are. I don't think it's terribly complicated. I think, um, I know administration has uh, a sanitization uh, schedule as it is, um, and I think we just need to adjust that schedule uh, uh, to, to acknowledge the fact that we need to manage pollen in these areas a hell of a lot better. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Abraham today. Lord Mayor, uh, again, I commend Councillor Hyde for bringing in this motion and uh, um, for uh, choosing to bring this into the chamber. Thank you. I have Councillor Moran and then Councillor Sims. Councillor Moran, hello, hello. Yeah, look, um, I'm in two minds about this and I'll um, ask um, well, Councillor Hyde to put my mind at rest when he sums up because it's not at rest now. Um, you yourself, Lord Mayor, tried to move a motion like this. Um, and what what happened was that we basically stopped planting plane trees, and um, as the known, pretty known fact that the Lord Mayor suffers thinks suffers from asthma, and she blames on the plane trees. At the time, we brought in the Asthma Association, and I think the plane tree was number seventeen. Um, they explained that while they, they, the itchy balls look bad, there are other trees and um, weather conditions that cause the, um, cause the onset of asthma at certain times of the year. One of them was when the north wind blew, it blows the wild oat seeds uh, and pollen down from the farmlands above. This coincides with the itchy balls, which were considered, while prolific, not particularly um, dangerous. So I can see where this motion is coming from. We already, um, because of what happened before, um, do not plant many plane trees. Now my street is having a replacement of trees. They're, they started with plane trees. Now they're going to claret ashes. 
which is very disappointing. The plane tree is the most magnificent tree. Um, uh, you won't get hay fever when the itchy balls are dropping if you go to London and Paris, because it's our situation south of a large desert with wild oats. And that was explained to us. Um, uh, just managing a pollen situation such as wetting the footpath and sucking it up, that's fine. Um, but this, this motion will put the final nail in the coffin of um, plane trees. And don't look at me like that, Lord Mayor. We've had this discussion many um, times. Council Moran, I can assure you the, the motion did not come from me and nor did the question I noticed that was what done while I was away. I'm not aware of the question I know what you're talking about. Um, but I would ask Councillor Hart, Councillor Hart to, um, in his summing up, to make, to reassure me that this isn't the final nail in the coffin of the beautiful London plane trees, which are a, a picture, make our streets beautiful and are the finest street tree. And as the Asthma Council said, is not one of the main causes of asthma at that certain time of year. And if he does, I will vote for it. I have Councillor. Sorry, I think I've got Councillor Sims next. Thank you, Lord Mayor. And um, look, as a hay fever sufferer myself, um, I um, am certainly keen to uh, look at um, look at this. I understand it's an issue for lots of different people um, in the city of Adelaide. I understand um, Councillor Moran's concerns around not wanting to um, remove particular trees. Um, well, I see this as being a, a, a broader sanitisation um, strategy and it will come back to council for, for consideration. Um, so on that basis, I, I'm happy to um, support it. I know uh, <coughs> issues around, um, and that cough wasn't the dramatic effect, um, <laughs> issues around uh, pollen are, um, uh, are um, a problem for a lot of people in the city of Adelaide. So yeah, let, let's have a look at it. Thank you, Councillor Sims. Councillor Martin, did you have a hand up? Oh, yeah, look, uh, Lord Mayor, I was uh, going to support this, um, and uh, then uh, Councillor uh, Moran reminded me that there are other pollen producing agents in the city which affect people. And I'm wondering whether the mover might consider removing plane trees, and then it's just an open investigation of pollen uh, rather than targeting a particular species. Would the mover be prepared to do that? Um, in my summing up, I was going to say I'm not an arborist either, uh, although I, I defer to Councillor Moran's knowledge on the topic. Um, uh, I have done some research from this. This motion basically comes from the feedback I'm receiving from local residents. Um, I brought it in the current form because I think this is actually achievable. I, I, I do, my gut feel is that if we expanded it to look at all of those uh, particular trees, and I'll just refer to my question on notice, ash, plain, elm and oak trees, that may be a little bit too much for us to manage without having an impact on operational uh, budgets. Um, okay. So I guess the short answer That's, is no. Yeah, okay, thank you. <laughs> that, was a, that was not a short answer. Um, oh, well, look, uh, in that case, uh, Lord Mayor, I, I won't be able to support this. I'm quite happy. I do understand that people have issues associated with hate. Do move an amendment. Oh, OK. Well, I'll, I'll move that um, uh, we place a full stop at the word um, year. And then it covers everything. Um, I, um, do I have a seconder for that? No, I'm um, too. Did you want to exclude the parklands as well? So it yes. says excluding excluding the parklands. Yeah, because I, I don't want to limit it. Um, so you want it, everything including the parklands? The, the city of Adelaide is the parklands, it is the streets. And all I'm proposing is that by not identifying London plane trees, which are, I think, targeted often uh, uh, by people in this city as the sole cause of their allergies and their hay fever. And look, Mayor, I've got to tell you, I suffer hay fever. I take two pills a day and it keeps it at bay. Sorry, I, I, I was actually looking for a seconder. I was just asking whether you wanted to include the plane trees. Thank you, <laughs> Councillor Donovan. I'm sorry, Lord Mayor, I thought you saw Councillor Donovan's hand. Um, look, I, I, I'm just suggesting that it is a, as broad as possible so as to not exclude anything. Um, to target simply one species of tree um, is, to my mind, unfortunate, 
Um, I do remember that we, we had an address from somebody during the last term of council when there were a variety of factors identified. Plane trees was one of them, but grasses also were identified and particular varieties of grasses. Now, if in the management of uh, pollens and of uh, the allergic reactions, I know that people in this city suffer, we look at the full gamut of uh, possibilities, that seems to me to be a, a much more open and evidence-based approach than simply identifying a particular tree. Um, so, look, I, I, I just hope uh, people support that. It just seems to me to be pretty sensible. Thank you, Councillor Donovan. Uh, Councillor Kira, I need Councillor Donovan because she seconded the amendment. Thank you. Councillor Kerr. What about leaving in excluded? Sorry. Sorry. Councillor Moran, uh, it's Councillor Kerr is yes. talking. Councillor Kerr, you've got the microphone, so I'll, I'll allow Councillor Munn. Uh, you need to put it on. Uh, sorry, I'd be happy to allow Councillor Munn to re-amend his motion uh, prior to speaking to it. I'm happy to re-amend as opposed to the secondary to say it's Councillor Donovan, are you happy with that? Excluding, excluding the plans? <laughs> Councillor Kerr. Thanks. Look, um, I, I'm in favour of this amendment. Um, I don't think there's anything, um, I, don't, I don't believe there's anything sort of untoward with Councillor Hyde's motives, but, but nevertheless, I think, you know, I spoke about perceptions earlier, uh, and, and look, you know, you, it looked at, to have to, it's it's funny that we're now having to come to the defence of the humble or the very grand plane tree, um, but I do feel compelled to do that. But the plane trees, plane trees are are there for a, for, for a particular reason. They they present an incredible grandeur, uh, but they do it with a capacity to slough off their bark and to thrive in a city environment, uh, which is why they're particularly chosen. So, and this has to be mentioned because um, it's about perceptions, but there can be. There can be uh, at times a sort of uh, a sort of a social engineering by stealth via the by the trees uh, and the treescape that we've got. So I think it is actually a prudent thing to to say here. Look, we're not singling out the the uh, poor old plane tree. Um, the, it's prudent, I think, Lord Mayor, to 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 say that uh, whilst we're not casting aspersions, we're not singling out. Uh, the poor old plane tree. There are many drivers for, for hay fever. My understanding is principally native grasses and things. Um, so I, I think this is actually a good compromise. And, and, and again, I don't think this amendment is suggesting anything, uh, any kind of you know untoward motive. But I think it is it is a worthwhile, prudent thing because because there is evidence of of a shift, uh, particularly an anti non native tree sentiment that tends to pervade that tends to pervade, and that is something we ought to be mindful of at, at every time. So I think it's worth having this amendment. I'm just going to ask the CEO to clarify the comment from Councillor Moran around us stopping trees. Yeah, three, Lord Mayor. Just to be really clear, we have a green city plan, and within that plan, it talks about a real kind of balanced approach to planting. Plane trees are still included within our plantings list, and we still plant them. So be very clear about that. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I think I think that's it. I don't. Are there any other speakers? If not, I'll go back to Councillor Martin. Yeah. Yeah. I just want to make a couple of comments. Um, that I do think I do think expanding. Uh, I'm very sincere about this. Um, to all of these various trees, which actually covers probably. I mean, if plane trees are what, fifteen hundred odd in the city, um, you're gonna you're gonna make the proposal completely unworkable by including all the others. Plane trees are the ones that we most consistently get. Uh, uh, complaints about. Um, uh, they're also uh, very conveniently placed um, in boulevards. I mean, there must be probably 200 plane trees along Hutt Street. So, for example, you know that that's an area you have to go down. Um, King William Road South, you know that that's an area you have to go down. Um, uh, same with other parts of the city. Um, and I think the fact that excluding the parklands was originally taken out of this motion um, just goes to show that those seeking to amend haven't really done their due diligence of course if you didn't have excluding the parklands in there you'd be proposing that we go and and uh, blow back of what must be hundreds of hectares of, of parklands um, uh, which is of course patently absurd and then when we're talking about grass it's all well and good to talk about grass um, uh, but that's not the problem we're trying to fix grass is not really the issue if you're walking down hut street um, uh, and, and you're sneezing there we don't actually have much grass there what we do have though 
plain trees. And that's the issue I come back to. Um, uh, and of course, when I'm talking about the plain trees, um, uh, if I was allowed the opportunity to sum up on my original motion, um, uh, I would have highlighted that uh, my comments in the media broadly have been that this is a preemptive strike, or my original motion was a preemptive strike, because you see in Melbourne they're starting to remove plain trees because they've become too big an issue. Now that's because they haven't taken care of the problems there. If we take care of our problems here, we won't, and, and to be honest, I've got to say again, very, very surprised that the City of Adelaide has been here for you know uh, over 100 years and we haven't ever thought about managing this aspect um, of our public realm properly. Um, if we take care of the problem, then we're going to avoid the need to take out plane trees. So um, uh, look, there's a plane tree right in front of my house um, and, and to put councillors at ease who uh, appreciate our British colonial uh, foliage, I suppose, um, uh, I would rather uh, chain myself to a, to a plane tree um, than see it be cut down, particularly by the city of Adelaide. Uh, and of course, I'd be very sad if that's um, uh, what happened. And of course, again, um, and I'll probably just run out of time in one moment, but I just wanted to highlight, um, yes, that there was a question on notice that I put last week. Um, it would be nice if councillors read their papers. Um, and that outlines that, no, we don't uh, avoid cutting down plane trees entirely, uh, but we do have a particular preference for those trees uh, that aren't ash, plain, elm and oak uh, to plant trees that produce less pollen. Um, so that's the current state of play. But of course, part one of that answer is there is no policy for the management of pollen, particularly caused by plane trees. I think if you looked at all the ones I just listed there, it's, it's not going to be workable. And if administration comes back with something like that, it's going to be uh, a, a cost in the order of hundreds of thousands of dollars to think about looking at all those streets for all for all that time. We're probably going to have to expand that workforce in order to deal with that. Councillor Kerry had a question. A question um, for the administration. Uh, it, with, with, the, with, with the wording of the amendment uh, being general, um, would there not be, nevertheless, uh, allowance there for a focus uh, for a discretion by administration? Uh, does this uh, does this amendment not uh, preclude council administration from identifying that if plane trees are the most significant problem, they'll get the most attention? I, I just don't see that this amendment uh, stops you from focusing on where the problem is, if that's where the problem is. Uh, and I, I, would, I would say that you know, the, the issue here is not the removal of trees, it's, it's as Councillor Harwood noted, it is the attrition. So it is not, it's the replanting after they die down the track. Okay. Right. I'll ask the CEO to answer the question. Sorry, Lord Mayor, we would take a practical approach and clearly identify the key risk areas. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Moran, is that a question? I think you've already... No, I spoken oh, yeah, I haven't spoken. Oh, sorry, my apologies. Um, yes, look, I think this is a very good amendment. Um, I think we've established that there are many trees that cause a pollen drop, and there's also external factors. The crepe myrtle was much higher on the list of um, allergenic trees than the, um, the London plain. The London plain probably is focused because there's a lot of them. Uh, the jacaranda at certain times, far more allergenic. Um, so just to focus, whatever Councillor Hyde says, you've named one tree there, and therefore the implication is that's the troublesome tree. And no matter what the CEO says, we have dramatically uh, reduced the percentage of London planes in our suite of trees. Uh, so that's a disingenuous answer to that. We are veering well away from London planes with absolutely no scientific or factual basis for it. Um, I gather what Councillor Hyde means is that we change the way we sweep the streets. He mentioned blowers and things like that. Now, we're not just going to go and sweep the street or clean the street just under the London plane trees. We'll have to change our whole um, uh, way of doing it, perhaps a fine spray of water to keep the pollen from when we're doing our um, uh, sweep it blowers, we, we send the water truck first to, to stop it um, going um, into the air um, and people breathing it in. But as I said, it's, it's silly to put one tree in there um, because that will lead the administration to reduce the numbers of London planes if they're the troublesome one. They don't want to increase their cleaning costs. So wouldn't it be great if we could get rid of all the London planes like that? And then we wouldn't have to bother about it, but we'd leave all the jacarandas, all the crepe myrtles, all the golden rain trees far more dangerous to the asthmatic than um, 
than the London Plane Tree. So uh, I think the amendment doesn't change what Councillor Hyde's saying. It just adds the other trees to it too. And we can't just, we're not just going to super clean streets with London Plains when there are other trees that will cause more. We have to look at all of them. And as the, um, the CEO said, we will take a, a practical, um, sensible approach to it. We're only a small council area, it's not rocket science. So don't pick on the London plane. It will lead to their demise if you let that be the only tree looked at. Uh, Councillor Hyde, did you have a question? Yeah, I just had um, I just had a quick question, uh, which I think might guide councillors. Um, uh, through you, Lord Mayor, to the CEO, and perhaps even someone from Public Realm might want to participate in this if they're here. Um, uh, is, uh, is the council uh, aware and up to date with the body of scientific research done regarding um, a London plane train, uh, London plane tree trichromes versus pollen and their various uh, alert allergenic With all due effects. respect, this is entering the debate. Um, you can sum up. I wasn't the one that mentioned scientific information. Um, I, we're, we're asking administration to make a determination on how allergic these people are to these trees. I'm just curious, has that research been done? Or, or is administration at least aware of that body of knowledge? Um, I couldn't I couldn't say yes, so I'll have to take it on notice. I'm sorry. Take it on okay. notice. Okay. So, I'll see you. Thank you. I, I have another question. Sorry, Lord Mayor. Assuming that body of scientific work hasn't been done or council isn't aware of it, um, notwithstanding that there are lots of other trees that we're looking at and all their uh, uh, specific um, specific cell structures and what have you, um, uh, uh, through your Lord Mayor CEO, are you confident that you would have enough time in time for pollen season, which um, I think my motion talks about starting in September, that administration could practically complete that work and assess where you need to prioritise um, uh, based, on, based on that scientific evidence? No. <laughs> Again, I couldn't say, and I would need to take it on notice because it could be a large piece of work. Yeah. Interesting. Thanks. Members, I, if there's no other speakers, I'll go back to Councillor Martin to sum up on the amendment. Uh, thank you, Lord Mayor. Look, I, we're, I know we're always in deep trouble when the council is Googling on the phone, quoting the latest scientific evidence on something. Um, <laughs> Look, I, I, I always thought that Councillor Hyde was an erudite, evidence-based person, and um, I, I am a bit surprised by his resort to Google on the phone. But look, the, the issue is we are just asking the administration to go away and have a look at all of the facts and come back to us. Uh, and as much as Councillor Hyde wants to influence the debate against whatever tree or species he thinks is not appropriate for the city, it's much more appropriate to us, for us to go out and find out which are the agents which are causing the problem. And let's not get confused about the argument about uh, the, the palette of trees which we use in the city or what happens in Melbourne. The Melbourne circumstances, Councillor Hyde knows, is that Melbourne has had terrible tree diseases for some time. And as a consequence of that, our policy has changed. Therefore, the palette is varied in order to survive the kind of disasters that Melbourne has had. Beyond that, there is no point in discussing it further. Please just support an open-ended, evidence-based uh, report to Council. Uh, members, I'll ask you to vote on the amendment. Those in favour? Those against? That is carried. That now becomes a substantive. I'll go, if there's any further discussion. If not, I'll go back to Councillor Hyde to sum up. Um, I do think this does change the nature of the report that comes back. I'll just impress upon administration that um, uh, plane trees are the, are the trees that our ratepayers complain about. Um, and this, the original motion didn't actually say only plane trees, it just said particularly um, uh, in areas where there are plane trees. That's what I wanted us to focus on. Um, uh, to be honest, as the only person here who's done reading on the topic, other than perhaps the Lord Mayor. Um, um, Thank you, members. Councillor Hyde is speaking. Um, I would, I would, I would just, I would just highlight that um, that, that the jury is actually out as to as to what uh, causes the worst allergic reaction. No, it's not. Um, uh, with regards to plane trees, it, it actually no, is. Not. Um, and so uh, this was more so us venturing in there uh, to try and fix it. Councillor Moran. To try it for three months and to see if we got better results uh, over this spring. And then to see if we could tweak it.
going into next year. It was never to be that complicated. I fear administration will now go away, have to go and then count up all the other trees in the city and then uh, have the public realm team look at all them and think, oh gosh, how are we going to clean all of our streets while focusing on these particular ones? In fact, I fear if they came back with a strategy and then we then endorse that strategy, you'd start to see parts of the city that are actually quite dirty because we haven't been able to afford them the attention that they need. Um, the original motion was very practical. Um, uh, uh, again, the, the, the lack of understanding of the topic. And again, I'll refer, I'll refer to the inclusion of the parkland originally. We want to hoover up the parklands. How absurd. Um, uh, look, nevertheless, nevertheless Members, I if I could ask you, please stop interrupting and let Councillor Hyde sum up. You've got about a minute left. Nevertheless, I'm, I'm glad we've had this discussion. Um, I'm looking forward to this report coming back to us in a timely manner um, uh, so that we can uh, satisfy so many of our ratepayers who have issues with asthma and allergies um, and what have you. And I'll just uh, seek to impress on the administration. Don't overcook it. Um, please make sure the proposal that comes back uh, is, uh, is both workable and, and, and to the best that you can make it operationally has no effect on our budget. Thank you. Thank you, members. I'll now ask you to vote those in favour. Those against, that is carried. Members, we now go to 15.5, Councillor Abraham Zadeh. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, Lord Mayor, as we know, the changes to, the proposed changes to land tax, oh, sorry. Sorry, before I get stuck into it, um, I, uh, uh, I have this motion as printed and I seek a second. Thank you, Councillor Ho. Okay, I'll pick up where I left off. Um, Lord Mayor, we know that uh, the changes of, uh, of this proposed land tax uh, has, has, has two sides and we've heard both sides of the argument. Uh, we've had uh, uh, some members in here in this chamber uh, um, call hard-working ratepayers, tax chiefs and rorts. But um, uh, I would just like to mention one thing. Regardless of whether if you support uh, the changes uh, uh, to this land tax or not, the first thing uh, I would like to remind members of is the impact that it's going to create on affordability. We, we've always um, uh, uh, spoken about the city of Adelaide being an affordable jurisdiction, but this, uh, uh, the changes to this tax will obviously uh, uh, change that and it will affect our, uh, our tenants at a time where we have uh, rising vacancy rates. All we have to do is go for a walk down to Hutt Street, Melbourne Street, O'Connell Street, you even go down to Rundle Street uh, and, uh, and, and you see some of the shops that are uh, being vacant now. Um, so, so really, uh, sending a, um, a message to the state government uh, would be the right thing because here we would be standing up for our ratepayers who are the tenants uh, in those shops. We're trying to keep uh, Adelaide as affordable as possible. The second issue here, uh, Lord Mayor, is the mass exodus that we'll see of investment. The mass exodus of, of investment uh, out of the state and out of this capital city. You know, with the former state government, the state was known for uh, exporting young people. We used to have more young people leave the state than to come into the state. Now we've, uh, we've seen that change. Uh, earlier this year, we, we saw that uh, uh, that's no longer the case. But what this change does is that we'll, uh, this will create funds being the largest export of the state rather than young people. So people that are willing, that were willing to invest in South Australia and invest in the city of Adelaide will take that investment, will take those funds and they'll take them out of Adelaide. This has many rippling effects uh, and I've only just touched on the, uh, on the two issues uh, that, I've, uh, that I've seen and uh, the, these two issues that I've had uh, ratepayers highlight to me. Um, this comes with uh, <laughs> This comes with, with many other uh, implications. As we heard earlier from the uh, Deputy Lord Mayor, uh, the uh, Value General's um, uh, department who are doing uh, significant revaluations. I believe this is the most significant one they've done in, in about 20 years. 
that will jack up the prices, that will get the uh, get the rents up, that will uh, uh, put up your uh, SA water bill, and that will get up your ESL levy. So uh, there's uh, there's a lot that can uh, that this tax can uh, uh, can impact. Uh, uh, again, Deputy Lord Mayor uh, highlighted the foreign investment tax that was introduced earlier last year. Um, so really. Uh, the one thing that, uh, uh, I guess, one way that I can describe uh, the changes to the land tax is that it is the final nail in the coffin in the investment industry. People will take those funds, will take those investments and take them out of the state and take them out of the city. And that's not what I would like to see here. So uh, please do the right thing, members. Stand up for your right pairs and support this motion. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Ho, did you wish to speak? Uh, Councillor Sims. Thanks, Lord Mayor. Look, um, I don't uh, support this motion. Um, I must admit, I was very surprised to um, see this coming forward because uh, when I have argued for Council to adopt a position on an issue um, impacting on state government, I've been ridiculed um, for doing so. Indeed, uh, just two weeks ago, when I proposed that we adopt a strong position on renters' rights, I was told, and I quote from um, Councillor Abrahimsider, it was reported in the advertiser, there is nothing stopping you from picking up a piece of paper, picking up a pen and writing a letter to your local MP, he said. You don't need to raise it here in council. Councillor Kira said we have to be very careful because there is a downside to sticking out beyond that which we are supposed to be dealing with. This is an area that the public delegate to the state government, he said. Well, this is an area that the people delegate to the state government, Lord Mayor. Taxation, land tax, it is core business on the, of the state government. So I really hope tonight, once and for all, we end this nonsense argument that says that any time I propose that we advocate for an issue that I consider to be of importance, I'm patronised and told that it's not within our remit. I think that needs to end um, tonight. But also, um, Lord Mayor, it's not a good look for this council to you know, kick Remses to the curb and say that that's not our core business, and yet to go into bat for wealthy investors, vested interests, and the big end of town. That's not a good look at all, Lord Mayor. But the other um, point I want to make is that the state government are actually uh, making what I regard as a good reform here. I'm not a fan of the state uh, Liberal government, but even a broken watch is right twice a day. And they are correct on this land tax reform. It's a, a sensible measure, it's an equitable measure that closes um, loopholes in our taxation system. And if you look at the comments of the briefing note I sent it out to members earlier today from SACOS, they make this point. They say that aggregating land holdings ensures that landholders are treated equitably so that they have uh, where they have total land holdings of equal value. And they also say that the proposed changes will bring in an estimated $40 million per year into the state budget. And SACOS is concerned that if these changes aren't made without the revenue from these changes, there'll be further cost saving measures resulting in cuts to vital services. And we know, of course, that the state government have uh, formed in this regard. You know, um, Lord Mayor, I've heard it said that, oh, there's concern that investors are going to go elsewhere. Well, every other state has these kind of measures in place. This is the city of Adelaide, not the Kenneman Islands. I mean, I don't know what we're going to do to create some sort of environment where people can dodge their tax obligations. That's not the sort of environment I think we should be uh, trying to create here in our city. I've heard people talking about wealth creation and, you know, uh, just a minute more, Lord Mayor. Thank you. Um, I've heard uh, members talking about wealth creation. Well, perhaps they need to focus a little bit more on O'Connell Street rather than Wall Street, because that is core business of um, this council. If you're going to pick a fight with the state government, do it on an issue like climate change. Do it on an issue like renters' rights. Don't do it to stand up for vested interests. That's not the appropriate approach that we should be taking on this council. I urge councillors to reject this motion and to not buckle to pressure from vested interests. I urge councillors to reject this motion and to support the common good and a sensible taxation uh, measure. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Sims. Councillor Kerr. Oh, well, thanks, Lord Mayor. Um, it's a bit of a curious 
curious thing to hear uh, a councillor uh, put forward the very first argument, uh, the very first argument uh, in favour of their um, motion uh, being that uh, the motion goes against a principle that they, they believe should be upheld for some reason. So uh, it's a bit strange to hear that, uh, that this argument that, it, uh, you know, uh, on the one hand, it seems Councillor Sin supports the principle that we ought to stick to our remit, but on the other hand, uh, well, let's not do that in, in this case. It doesn't make sense. And I must say, Lord Mayor, there was a piece of cherry, prime cherry picking there by Councillor Sims in, 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 in uh, articulating just one of the things that I was concerned about with that motion you referred to previously. Now, there were two reasons I posed that Reuters motion. One of them was quite rightly that principle that we ought to, in general, stick to our remit because if you don't, you distort uh, dem democratic outcomes. That does not mean uh, that you cannot say anything about state government policy. We oppose the uh, Oval Hotel uh, on two very important grounds, Lord Mayor. Councillor, we're speaking to the motion. I, and and with, with, with respect, Lord Mayor, I am speaking to the motion because I'm addressing the principle. Uh, the argument is that this is illegitimate uh, because it's not within our, re within our remit. Uh, and, 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 and with your indulgence, I'm, I, I am... Just to clarify, Lord Mayor, I wasn't saying it was illegitimate. I was just exposing the double Lord standards. Mayor? Uh, is he, he, well, is it if he is allowed to correct something that is okay? Well, I can sit down and let him, you know, get up and argue some more if he wishes. Um, no, I'm just clarifying. I never said <laughs> was, okay, okay, anyway. members, please, Councillor Kerr, please anyway, continue. Look, look uh, it is relevant. Uh, we opposed the Oval Hotel for two important reasons. One was uh, the parklands issue. The other was that it was a distortion. It was a, a return to uh, uh, it was a return to the to the, the government giving favours. It was going to dilute uh, the inflows of capital coming in. Okay, uh, that was a perfectly good reason. It was about protecting capital inflows into the city. That was one of the grounds that we opposed the Oval Hotel, protecting capital inflows into the city. So whether you're for or against this, the argument that this is completely uh, illegitimate is, uh, with respect, not uh, not relevant. It's a piece of cherry picking. There are two reasons I oppose the renters. The renters one was, was rubbish. It was going to damage renters. Councillor. It was going to damage renters. Councillor. And that, that's, but um, I'll, I'll leave it at that. I, I just want to uh, clarify uh, particularly when I am cited for something uh, incorrectly. And that, I'll leave it at that. Thank you. I have Councillor Moran. Uh, yes, look, I'm um, taking up that. Uh, take, I don't think that Councillor Kerr was targeted by that. It was a, um, a, a common theme through the argument. So I don't quite know why he has to get quite so nasty. Councillor Sims is just pointing out the inconsistency um, you can vote either way you like, and, but he did. There was a great inconsistency of the reason why some people didn't vote for other motions, and now putting something up that's uh, in the same uh, in the same thing. Um, look, uh, uh, to put uh, councillor some councillors' uh, comments. So, yes, I would urge the team to, in their own personal private life, to write to um, Mr. Lucas to um, and engage in the consultation that the government is carrying out now for this. Um, as I said in the media, I don't want this going anywhere with my name on it. Um, and uh, I'll call a division afterwards and ask that perhaps they consider putting who voted for it. Councillor, if, if the uh, Chamber would like uh, that to be in said letter, if this motion gets up, I'm very happy to do that. Thank you. Uh, well, that, that's a, a, a thank you very much because I do. this is not being done in my name at all. This is a good tax. Uh, the raising of the threshold has meant many people, myself included, uh, once back in the day when the land tax went up, that could then rent part of the house out and not pay any land tax. That has really helped the mum and dad investors, that raising the threshold means a lot of people will not have to pay the vast amounts they are now. Um, he's also, uh, the Treasurer's also lowered the rate so it's cheaper. If there was a motion saying he should lower it more, that would have my full support. I don't think it's lowered enough. The aggregating of land holdings is closing a loophole, closing a rule that all the other states have closed. So I'm not quite sure where they're dancing off to other states to take the money from here, where exactly they're intending to go. Um, at the very beginning of this debate, um, I had a lot of sympathy for it. I thought, what are they doing with land tax? Why aren't they lowering it? 
Then gradually, the media very sense, very uh, did made very good. Um, I think Matthew Abraham's column was particularly useful. And if you read the Vox Pops and the online um, from the advertiser today, which I presume reflect the views of many, um, and also the In Daily, you'll see that pe the penny has dropped for the most most people. That these this is a good tax. It's closing loopholes. It's stopping rorts. Um, and yeah, I don't uh, to what the council that said. You know, we're accusing people of doing the wrong thing. Yeah, we are, and they have been for a long time. But they've been doing it legally. Now the minister has closed that, and I think that's a very good thing. But I don't think see why the team has to bring drag the council into this. If they've got their private fights with their own team, with their own party, that's fine. Um, and I really thank the Lord Mayor for um, including the division vote in the letter, because I don't want my name anywhere near that letter. Uh, members, are there any other speakers? Deputy Lord Mayor. Um, thank you, Lord Mayor. Look, um, this is very easy for me. I decided yesterday to um, go on a survey uh, with ratepayers. It started at a really late at night. I only had about 80 responses. 90% so far of respondents are ratepayers in the city of Adelaide. 60% are commercial property owners. 88.5% of them do not support this tax. 11.5% support the tax, and the ones that do do not own properties um, at all. Um, on question of why they don't support it, the vast majority was because it will lessen investment in our state. So it creates a perception, which we were talking about all night tonight, talking about perceptions and magic and theories and all the things that cause impact on our state. It causes a perception that we're not competitive and it causes a perception that we are a high taxing state and hence a high taxing jurisdiction, which will deflect people from our state somewhere else. We shouldn't be brought up to par with Sydney and Melbourne. We need to be more competitive with Sydney and Melbourne and far more competitive to be able to attract investors to come to our city. On the question of how will you deal with the increase, 67.65 of respondents said, I will consider investing outside of South Australia, followed with, I will not go ahead with proposed developments in our state or city. 55% of respondents owned, and this is really interesting, owned less than four properties, okay? So if we think about this, this is the lower end of town. Aggregation is a very important thing to note because companies, Council Moran. Because companies and trusts under Australian law and under company law and corporation act are individually on their own as legal entities. They cannot be grouped for taxation purposes. That's the reality of how the law, there's protections for companies and trusts in the way of asset protection, in the way of also when we're talking about people passing on and moving things to their kids and dealing with stamp duty, these are protections, these are freedoms under the current law in Australia where these entities are protected. Changing the goalpost has a dramatic impact on people. And I'm not talking about the big end of town here, I'm talking about people that own one or two properties. I mean, you're talking about a person that lives at their home with their partner at the age of 70, owns their home, has two investment properties that are still possibly mortgaged at a value of $350,000 each today in a separate trust they don't pay any tax for them. With the aggregation, they'll be paying $2,000 a year. They'll be paying $7,000 a year, Lord Mayor, if they have three properties. Three, that's it, 7,000. 7,000. Councillors. Can you please Lord, let the Deputy Lord Mayor finish speaking? They don't want to be educated on issues, I guess, Lord Mayor. They oh, can okay. keep talking, which is fine. Um, it's very it's very easy. Um, if I could just grab one minute extension, thank you. Um, when we're looking at all the facts before us, this does impact the younger side of town, the middle side of town, the big end of town. It impacts everyone. We already have significant amount of vacancies in the city of Adelaide when it comes to commercial properties. This tax will have to be passed on to someone. If it's passed on to the tenant and it cannot be absorbed by the property owners, we're going to have a significant impact on more vacancies in the city of Adelaide. And look, we can sit down and spin this as many ways as we want, but at the end of the day, 
The problem we've got here is we need to be a lower tax jurisdiction. And this has an impact on our right players. And as mentioned before, the VG valuations, the 7% foreign investment tax, the VG valuations on their own, we've got a question in the debate as a council what we do with them. Unless going up to 125% increase. What are we going to do? Are we going to be passing that valuation to our right players, business and commercial? I know we don't at the moment because we value through rental return, but do we have to? I mean, what are we going to do? How are we going to pass on that increase? What will the right increase? Is that two minutes or one? One more, please. Yep. This is a perfect example. If you can't convince people with reason, you just confuse them with bullshit. That's exactly what we see in this chunk. Yeah. 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 You know, by from some of the councillors. <laughs> Uh, when you see a greedy agree with the Liberal Party, that's when you know something's wrong. Oh, <laughs> that's when you know something's yeah. wrong. It's like, wow, what, 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 what just happened? We, we aren't in Parliament that now, the Senator. Reality. Sorry, he's Councillor. Can we just, okay, members? I object to the language. Yeah. Oh, what language? I don't call anyone anything. Oh, no, no, no. Oh, I've heard what, much worse. Okay. Okay. I might have heard much worse in this well, chamber. Exactly. Councillor Abraham has heard much worse. Councillors, thank you. Deputy Lord Mayor, you have one minute. I have summed up, Lord Mayor. I'll leave it here. Great. Thank you. I have Councillor Martin. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Look, I, I just don't understand this. I don't get it. That young men, older men who are looking, I would think, for careers in state parliament can back the Liberal Party like this and think that they can get away with it. I just don't don't listen to Assad. They won't endorse him. Don't do it. Don't do it. Think, think independently. Um, are you talking to the motion, Councillor Martin? I am. I am, Lord Mayor. Thank you. I am. Look, this is, uh, this is pretty straightforward. Everybody pays land tax on investment properties worth over $390,000. The state government is increasing that to a $450,000 ceiling, um, and it applies mainly to commercial property. And look, quite simply, if I owned three properties, each of them was worth $350,000, I would pay $7,000 a year in land tax. And under these changes, that's going down. That's going down by better than 10%. Now, if I chose to contrive my affairs and have each of those properties, those three properties in a different trust or a different company, I would pay nothing. That is what the state is trying to avoid. It says that kind of contrivance is costing $40 million a year to the state budget. That means hospitals, that means schools, that means every service that we, uh, we consume. <coughs> now, what it's doing, what the state is doing, is no more than other places have done, like New South Wales. Um, it's saying no more contrived Council avoidance. Don't Councillor listen to Martin, something. you're supposed to be talking through me. I'm, I'm not sure who you're talking to then. I was looking at the sound board there. No, I wouldn't either. Um, and what we're going to do, according to the state government... Through the chair, thank you. I do. Uh, I am chairing this meeting through okay. the chair. Is That's the second warning, right? Councillor Martin. If you can't address the chair, then I'll ask you to sit down. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, can I look down at my notes, or do I have to look at you through the process? No, you may look at your notes. Oh, thank you very much. Now, what's not fair about this, Lord Mayor, what's not fair is that Team Adelaide is lining up with the big end of town. It's lining up with those who don't want to spend that $40 million on hospitals, schools, and other programs. Oh, it's as simple as that. Team Adelaide is on the wrong side. Councillors Hyde and Moran, can we please listen to Councillor Martin? Thank you, Lord Mayor. That is, I, I, the, I've given everybody two warnings tonight, and I will start invoking the actually Regulation 29. If we cannot, actually, please get through this motion. Is that the public disorder and morality clause? Councillor Martin, please no, no, continue. I'm asking, Lord Mayor. <laughs> I don't know what it is. I know what it is. Thank you, Jenny. Okay. It is the disorderly one. Thank you very much. Thank you, Councillor Martin. Please continue. Thank you. Look, I'm just saying that Team Adelaide might win this tonight. It's got the number, so it'll push it through. Point of order, Lord Mayor's time's up and he hasn't seeked an extension from the chamber. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry, Lord Mayor. He was interrupting. That's why. Members, one minute. Thank you. 
Oh, I'm sorry, I missed that. Can I look around and see what the remark was, Lord Mayor? You're uh, wasting your time, Councillor Martin. You can use it any way you like. Well, look, Lord Mayor, all I wanted to say is that Team Adelaide's got the numbers. It'll push this through. It'll win it tonight. But night by night, motion by motion, they are losing the support of the ratepayers of Adelaide, the people of South Australia. And let me tell you, tonight, they're losing the support of the state government. We are, as a council, putting ourselves at odds with the state over a matter that is clearly their domain. Thank you. I now have Councillor Hyde. Thank you, Lord Mayor. It's a pleasure to rise in support of this motion. Um, uh, and in doing so, to remind members uh, that by supporting this motion, I'm actually supporting my ratepayers. I'm supporting the hordes of ratepayers who have contacted me um, about this issue. And when I talk about ratepayers, um, I'm not really just talking about uh, the rich rubber barons. In fact, I'm not talking about them at all. I haven't spoken to any of them. No one's sought me out um, and given me an idea of how it might affect them. What I am talking about, Lord Mayor, um, are the renters, in fact, whose rent is going to go up because their landlord, who does not have that large property portfolio and does not have that much fat in the money they make on the property, is going to need to put up their rent. So I'm talking about those people. Um, I'm talking about the small businesses, Lord Mayor, whose rent is going to go up with these changes. Um, and of course, then uh, we've got other matters to think to it. And you've got to remember that this is this is a very this is a multifaceted policy. Um, it doesn't just affect uh, the big end of town, as we like to call them. And I don't know when that vernacular became a dirty word. I don't know when um, those who are wealth creators in, in the city and in our state uh, became people to be vilified. Uh, perhaps it was when we passed that motion about the register, um, uh, property developer register earlier. But um, uh, Lord Mayor, it affect, doesn't just affect them, it affects mum and dad investors. Um, uh, it affects uh, retirees, self-managed super fund, people who are saving for their nest egg. It affects all of these things. What we're going to see happen um, if this comes in, and of course that is a big if, because the state government have already said um, that they're going to consult widely, but they've already started to retreat back from this decision. Um, uh, they know what sort of a mess they have waded into here. Um, and uh, I'd be very happy to see a letter come from this chamber um, uh, 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 with Robert Sim's name on the, uh, on the other side of that because I think that actually might outline to them um, what sort of a sticky situation they've got themselves into. Oh, how dare you? Um, you say something Lord Mayor, Lord Mayor um, what we're going to see is, is an absolute exodus of investment from the city. We are going to see uh, those people um, who want to build on the many vacant blocks of land that we have in the city with no buildings on them not have enough capital to reinvest. We're going to see those people um, look to invest their capital interstate. And for the benefit of members, I would actually highlight that, yes, aggregation does occur interstate. And I'm not necessarily entirely opposed to the closing of this loophole. Um, but we must remember that if this state government change comes in, we are still the highest taxing jurisdiction. It's about the threshold and it's about the rate. And I would encourage members to look at that. And of course, if we're the highest taxing jurisdiction and you've got a decision whether to invest in South Australia or whether to invest interstate, where are you going to invest your money? I would. I, I don't really need to answer that question. One more minute, please, Lord Mayor. Thank you. Um, uh, so what we're going to see is we're going to see less investment in the city of Adelaide. Um, we're going to see uh, less uh, uh, property owners renewing their shop fronts. Um, uh, and that actually means less construction jobs. So um, at a time at a time when the state's economy is still quite fragile, um, uh, we're going to give it another whack. Um, at a time when small businesses and all of our precincts are doing it tough, we're going to have a policy um, as a state that uh, will basically see their rents go up. At a time when, of course, we know wages growth is sluggish, we're going to slug renters and others who, and, and other people in similar situations uh, with something that's going to adversely affect how much they have to pay. Um, this is the situation that we're dealing with um, here, Lord Mayor, and so I would strongly urge members to think twice about it, um, take the knowledge that they have garnered from this speech um, uh, and apply it when they vote, because if they vote for this motion, they're voting for their ratepayers and they're voting for all of them. If they vote against this motion, uh, they are saying that this council 
does not support a growing and vibrant city. Oh. Members, is there any other speakers? Councillor Donovan. Just briefly, Lord Mayor, to Councillor Hyde's points and also to Councillor Moran's points, uh, there are two people already in this chamber who have indicated that they would happily close this loophole but reconsider the tax rate. So, and likewise, I would similarly happily, happily close the loophole, therefore not support this motion, but consider a reduction in the tax rate, which is the overarching consideration. This does not respond to the equity issue that is being proposed by closing the loophole, which New South Wales, Queensland and Victoria have already done. But if the suggestion was that we reconsider the rate at which the aggregation is taxed, I would happily support that. I would not support this motion, which is clearly against basic equity principles. Thank you, Councillor. Any other members? No? Just um, just before uh, you finish, I guess, you know, uh, and I've already gone out speaking about it, it's, it's uh, closing the loophole is, is one thing. What I'm more concerned on is those flow on effects that have been discussed and that the transition that's talked about is actually, it happens in a year's time. That's not a transition, that's just a time frame. The rate in the dollar, I agree. I'm more concerned about the rate in the dollar with the aggregation tax. Um, and, but it's also the difficulty is that um, it's being looked at as the aggregation tax and then you've got your value of general uh, pilots that are coming through and they actually can't be looked at separately. I think that the effect of the value of general that's going to have on that land tax and that aggregation is going to be incredibly a huge impact. Um, we've already seen some of them. I think Walkerville, the average was 38%, and what's coming through from Unley at the moment is huge and is being passed on through council rates, through SA Water, through the emergency service levy, and through the uh, national resource management um, rates. So, combined, that is going to actually uh, see one massive slug on anybody that uh, actually owns um, investment properties. Um, uh, I will wait and see how the chamber goes, but um, obviously in writing to the Premier, um, I'm happy to undertake to say how the chamber has voted. Um, and I would consider that as part of that um, reconsideration proposal, we maybe highlight the tax rate as well. Um, I'll go back to the Deputy Lord Mayor when he sends up if you would like that included. Uh, oh, sorry, Councillor Abraham said, uh, if you'd like that included. Um, uh, with the motion in terms of um, considering the proposal and highlighting the impact. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, in, in summing up, I guess there's probably one thing that, oh, actually, there's, there's a number of things that I want to uh, touch on. We've heard from multiple members here uh, throw throw the, the term Team Adelaide around like it's a, like it's a dirty word. Um, well, I can tell you that the Team Adelaide stepped up for that great so That's exactly what we're doing here tonight. Thank you, thank you, Lord Mayor. That's exactly what we're doing here tonight. Um, but also, um, one of the things that uh, that I think members are thinking about is uh, this perception that's been created in uh, in changing this uh, uh, this land tax. You know, Councillor Hyde mentioned something uh, about about the uh, the economic environment being a little bit fragile. All you have to do is think think back to the last nine months. In the last nine months, we've had eight builders that have gone bust. Eight builders in nine months. What does that tell you? What does that tell you? We're here as a as a local government authority to create the right environment. For, for growth. That's what we're here for. And you know what? Since we are talking about ratepayers and standing up for our ratepayers, if I may, Lord Mayor, I would like to share a, uh, a brief scenario that uh, the ratepayer um, uh, described to me through an email. This particular ratepayer uh, has a property here, and uh, at the moment, uh, without these changes, they're paying roughly uh, $1,000 in, uh, in the land tax per annum. These changes forces this ratepayer to pay $13,000 in taxes per annum, from $1,000 to $13,000. These, these are the sort of changes that we're talking about. Councillor Moran, please. Thank you. Thank you, Lord Mayor. 
So these are hardworking individuals, hardworking families, hardworking ratepayers that have decided to invest in this state, that have decided to invest in the city of Adelaide, and that have decided to put their money where their mouth is, and I urge all members to support this. Thank you. Members, call for the vote. Those in favour? Six, those against? That is carried. <laughs> Council's division has been called on the motion. Those in favour of the motion, please rise and remain standing until all names have been called. Councillor Canal, Councillor Abraham today, Councillor Ho, Deputy Lord Mayor, Councillor Carer and Councillor Hyde. Thank you. Uh, members, that takes us to item number 16, which is motions without notice. Deputy Lord Mayor. I'll be very brief, um, Lord Mayor. I'll move the motion as um, printed um, on the uh, on the screen there, and I'll seek a seconder. Uh, so I had Councillor Abraham today. Um, members, can I just advise that the reason I accepted this motion without notice is because um, according to the carols by Candler, this is time critical. They have only till the end of August before they decide or whether they're able to run the event or not. Thank you, Lord Mayor. I'll be very brief. Look, this is just basically asking if there is any way we can assist. Uh, we have in the past, I believe in 2013, um, assisted Carol's by candlelight further um, at the time that we're experiencing some challenges around sponsorship. Uh, this is just to reach out. I know there's a significant amount of cost attached to events organisers these days when it comes to managing security, safety of people attending, etc. Um, there's also a cost obviously to lease our ground remediation. Anything we can do to assist, um, that would be a, just a great thing to be able to help out, at least so they can carry through uh, this year uh, and then potentially uh, look at ways to rejig their finances or re-look at their event uh, itself um, and plan for next year to be able to attract um, an event's uh, right, uh, naming, uh, naming right sponsor. Um, look, it's a great event in the city. Uh, a lot of road players attended, a lot of visitors from outside the city attended as well. Um, and look, in a time where we're seeing uh, people move away from such events, I think it's time to remember the importance of those traditions. And if we can, as a council, assist in any way, shape or form to make that happen, then so, so we should, so, so should we, and ask uh, councillors to support it. At the moment, we're just re requesting the administration reach out to organisers to explore ways to assist. I'm sure there'll be a report that'll come back to council uh, to get any, um, any, any support granted. And I'd like to also acknowledge councillor Sims um, for taking the lead on this as well, um, and uh, having, uh, having wanting to support um, something similar. Thank you, councillor Abrams. Did you wish to speak, members? Councillor Kerrin. Oh, just, a, just a minor thing, um, Deputy Lord Mayor, could, could we change that word citing to, well, I think what was intended, which is the spelling C-I-T-I-N-G. Yeah. Uh, it is minor, but I think it is worth doing because it looks, yeah. And uh, look, it's a great motion, I fully support it. I suspect it'll be unanimous, I hope it, it will be, um, but uh, that's really the only reason I want this. Thank you, Councillor Kerry. Councillor Martin. Well, just a question to the administration. Would they regard that as uh, being an investigation, perhaps, of whether we might be able to fund it in any way? CEO. Through you, Lord Mayor, that wasn't my intention, uh, that Council will be looking to fund it, unless it's a direction of Council. Is that? I wonder if the Deputy Lord Mayor would consider changing the word holding to funding or part funding or financially supporting? I just don't know if we're... I'd like to get some information and facts from the CEO at this stage from the administration before I make the change. So we will get some information to know if we can in the first place. Um, so I prefer not to change it. Uh, in that case, can I ask that there be a report presented to us at the next meeting if, as the Lord Mayor suggests, the decision will be made in the next four weeks? It's very time critical. Um, so That's my understanding. If we could have the report by next council meeting, would that be possible? Through the mayor, we can work towards that time frame. Look, look I, uh, I just uh, endorse the sentiment of the Deputy Lord Mayor. Um, mention of Christmas and love breaks out everywhere, but um, uh, it is a very important event. Um, there are generations of children in this city who've grown up with carols in the parklands or in some other locations. This is, in fact, the last major event uh, related to Christmas carols. We used to have them in our squares all over the city, but now most of the, uh, the carols happen in uh, that parkland area. 
with some very small exceptions in front of the wall and the like. And I do think it's important that kids have that opportunity to, to spend time with their families, um, singing carols and uh, otherwise enjoying the occasion. So uh, thank you, Deputy Lord Mayor. I think this is really important. Council does need to get behind him. Thank you, Councillor Martin. Councillor Sims. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, look, I also want to acknowledge the Deputy Lord Mayor for taking the lead on this. He and I were in furious uh, agreement on this issue, um, and I, I had also flagged a motion, um, but I, I saw the Deputy Lord Mayor was taking the lead on this, and so I'm, I'm happy to um, support this. Um, I would like to, um, when we're looking at uh, reaching out to organisers, look at if there is any flexibility within our Christmas budget to maybe increase um, our contribution. I'm not suggesting new funding, but we do have a significant Christmas budget. Maybe there's an opportunity for us to put a bit more money on the table to help. Um, and to also ask the state government if they can contribute um, a little bit more money as well, because that may make it easier for a um, sponsor to be found. So in terms of actions um, for administration, think about what we can do within our existing budget line for Christmas, but also let's talk to the state government and see if they can put a bit more money on the table as well. Um, just to speak to the motion, um, Lord Mayor, you know, I have lots of memories as a, um, a kid travelling into town from Flagstaff Hill to go to the Christmas carols with my mum and dad. And um, I had the opportunity to take them to the Christmas carols uh, last year. You were there as well, um, Deputy Lord Mayor, and I, uh, Lord Mayor, and I sat with um, Councillor Canole um, and his wife and family. Um, and it was a really enjoyable experience and a really great reminder of, I think, the value of these kind of events, because whatever your uh, religious perspective or denomination, they bring together the community. Um, and it's a free community concert. And um, I thought it was a really great event. So it would be a real shame to see it lost from the city. And um, that's why I'm, I'm so supportive of this. Thank you, Councillor Sims. Uh, I have Councillor Hyde. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Just on clarifying reach out, I assume part of that involves actually talking to them and asking them what they need, which would could then engage a discussion around the level of funding and then maybe you could dig a little deeper on um, CEO, hopefully. Um, uh, but I would like to thank the Deputy Lord Mayor um, for raising this um, and bringing this to the Chamber. And I think we'll be around it. You know, it's going to be unanimous, although last time I said that it wasn't. Um, uh, but I think uh, it's a very important thing that we do um, for our community, um, bringing, bringing them all together. Um, I'll admit, uh, I'm a Grinch, I loathe Christmas, um, uh, but, but, but I do support this, I do support this. It is important, um, tradition is important, bringing our community together is important. Um, uh, and at a time where we're sometimes losing these values, um, uh, all I can say is, uh, thank God we didn't go down the path of the city of Mitcham, whereby even uh, flirting with the idea of cutting Christmas, they've all signed their political death warrants. Thank you, Councillor Hyde. Members, if not, I'll go back to Deputy Lord Mayor to sum up. Thank you, members. Those in favour? Those against? That is carried. Now, Members, that takes us to uh, item 17, which is the exclusion of motion to exclude. Um, there are five items uh, presented with a request for consideration in confidence. Each item requires a motion decision to order the exclusion. So, councillors, for 18.1.1, if I could have a mover. Thank you, Councillor Canole, and a seconder. Uh, Deputy Lord Mayor, Council Canal, did you wish to speak to it? <coughs> Deputy Lord Mayor, no, members, any discussion? If not, Council Canal to sum up. No, members to the vote, those in favour, those against, that is carried. Uh, item 18.1.2, which is the advice of the Parklands Authority. Thank you, Council Canal. Seconder. <coughs> members, thank you, Deputy Lord Mayor. Uh, Councillor Canal, did you wish to speak? Deputy Lord Mayor, no, members? No. If not, back, you did want to no, speak? Sorry, back to the move, Councillor Canal. Summed up, those in favour? Those against, that is carried. Uh, we're on item 18.1.3. If I could have a mover, thank you, Councillor Canal. Seconder? Thank you, Councillor Donovan. Councillor Canal, did you wish to speak? 
Councillor Donovan, members, Councillor Noel to sum up. Thank you, members, those in favour, those against. Thank you, that is carried. Um, I have item 18.2.1, which is appointment of board members to the Adelaide Central Market Authority. Members, if I could have a mover. Thank you, Councillor Knoll, and a seconder. Thank you, Councillor Hyde. Councillor Knoll, did you wish to speak to it? Councillor Hyde, members. Uh, if I could go to the move to sum up, summed up. Members, those in favour, those against. Thank you, that's moved. Uh, that's <laughs> carried. 18.2.2, uh, 18 .2, appointment of board members to run the Mall Management Authority. If I could have a mover, thank you, Councillor Moran. And a seconder. Thank you, Councillor Sims. Councillor Moran, did you wish to speak to it? Uh, summed up. Councillor Sims, members. Councillor Moran, summed up. Members, to the vote, those in favour, those against, that is carried. Um,